His name's Rhapsody, my name's Sneaky Teak, and welcome back to another week of the Ladder Streak. How you doing, Rhapsody? Woo! Couldn't be doing better, Teak. And yourself? I'm great. I got to do the intro. <laughs> I'll put that right on the refrigerator. <laughs> right over there. It looks good on the refrigerator. Yeah, you did great, Tiki. So you <laughs> did as well. I, I, I hear the echoes, the mirror of my own. It's uh, It's interesting <laughs> being on this side of it. I was trying to figure uh, out, oh, how does, how does Teak usually respond? Well, with enthusiasm and then returns the question. Yes. That's got to be it. That's right. That's that's it. That's my job is simple. To be me aggressively. Well, I mean, look, it's the thing for which each of us are probably the most qualified, right? I think so. I think so. It, it checks out. Yeah. But we had a week off. And, and so I'm, I'm particularly excited to be here. We were talking about this a bit off camera, as we say. Mm-hmm. And we both kind of, we miss these in the off weeks. I'm, I know that people miss them from the viewer side, but as creators, you know, it's it's kind of a bright spot in the week for us to chat and catch up and talk about work, talk about games, talk about life and play some play some cards, click some cards. Exactly. It never seems like it's a, a flippant decision to have to skip a week. It's it's very much a, oh, mm -hmm. it's, it's the only thing that's possible at this point. Sorry. Yeah. No, but it's good because it's about it's about sustainability. I I, I think that was I mean, 2020 was like the year of becoming more woke. Mm -hmm. I think as individuals for a lot of people, and that was one of my biggest, really core realizations in 2020 is that you cannot make the best thing if you do not first take care of yourself. And so yeah. you got to do you got to lie, cheat, and steal for sustainability. You know, and if that means taking a week off sometimes or playing a weird game or going on a trip or having a week to where you're like, I'm only going to play with my little dog, Junior, all week. I'll take lots of pictures and then I'll be back. Then you got to do it. And of course, this entire time you're talking about it, I'm flashing up those pictures you're mentioning. Of course. <laughs> of course. I'm going to have to get you more. <laughs> He's grown so much. He's grown so much. When was when did we last talk about Junior? Uh, would have been two episodes ago. Two episode episodes 16. ago? So when we first got him home, Pretty shortly after we took him to the vet because, you know, he's got to get all of his vaccines and of all of his checkups and all of his anti everything. Mm -hmm. And the first time we took him in, he was, I want to say between eight and nine weeks, maybe eight and a half or nine weeks. And he weighed 18 and a half pounds. Mm -hmm. And we showed some of those pictures. He was a little floofy, foldy potato. Yep. He's so cute. We took him in this last week at 12 weeks and he weighed 32.8. This little, <laughs> this, our potato grew into a massive potato. It's like in Stardew Valley where you suddenly have all, you know, nine of your gourds grow together or whatever. Uh -huh. you, the boy is getting big. So big, in fact, that the vet was like, we have to put your puppy on a diet so that he doesn't grow too fast. He's getting weight. He's going to be like 100 pounds, Raps. You sure 90 or 100 pounds. You sure he's not setting up for mitosis? Maybe. <laughs> maybe he'll start splitting into more juniors. That, yeah. <laughs> the world can only hope. I can only hope, man. I would love that. He was he's super cute. It is. But the puppy it's never it's never long. You know, it goes by so fast. Like I'm looking back at these pictures. You know how like when people look at the pictures of their little kids and they're like, "Oh man, you were so cute when you were a baby." Mm -hmm. But I'm having that experience every week. Yeah, it's it's got to be absolutely wild. I've uh I I've always had a fascination for the Yeah kinds of uh, uh, time elapsed photography that a lot of people take of their pets. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. it, this often happens with large dogs, especially. And recently yeah. I saw one of the first three months, I think, week by week broken up of a St. Ben uh, sorry, not uh, St. Bernard, sorry, a uh, uh, Bernese Mountain Dog. And oh, yeah, they're big. It was just absurd. Like, here, this is a tiny little puppy I'm holding. And then by the end of it, it's like, I if I continue to hold this, I will break my back. Yep. Yep. We're approaching that point. We're getting there pretty quickly. I'm I'm working furiously to train him to make sure that all of the things that we sometimes lift him to do, he will do on his own. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just necessary, but it's great. I but anyway, I can talk about puppy all night, so you can't you can't let me do this. I I can talk about puppy all night as well. You know what? Episode's over. We're talking about puppies. <laughs> oh, someone clicked the depart button. Someone How do it. They? We have to, Junior. You rest well. We'll be back. 
Well, we'll circle back around, certainly. For the moment, oh, sweet. though. Ooh. Blue and different kind of blue. It's blurple. Ain't it just blurple, though? Hey, two Halo drippings in the base deck makes me feel pretty good about the possibility of doing some burnout stuff, though. It does. And it's real cheap right now. Energy siphons, hallowed drippings. We've got the discard for Titan's Tooth already because we're exiled, exiled. Mm -hmm. Oh, gosh. Yeah, we're in exiled. I forgot also... that we... Sorry. Oh, man. Oh, no. I just I had forgotten that we were finishing out exiled and then our final gauntlet will be main clan. Mm-hmm. It's, uh, Spooky. The, the final final is going to be Rectiflicker as well, which is... Mm -hmm, Ooh, mm -hmm. That's a spooky one. <laughs> hmm. The thing is, as I look at this base deck, as you've correctly identified, like, zero mm -hmm. costs, easy to cast, castable via our discards. Man, this feels like an incant deck, don't it? Where well, we luckily, we have shards to play into that. I mean, if, if ever there were a class that will take advantage of multiple card plays, multiple spell plays, and a, a starter who can take advantage. It's this one, right? So mm -hmm. every we'll single see what different we pick branch up. of Soul God. But we're gonna has do some incant. encanting regardless. It's even if it's not all we do, there will be encanting. It's one of our tools. It's kind of like um with Silent and Slay the Spire, when mm -hmm. people are like, I only want to play Shiv or I only want to play Poison, and yeah. I suggest that perhaps they could put both in the same deck. <laughs> you know, it's like we can incant and what are you talking about, T? In Venom isn't Cheap. a card. I mean, um, <laughs> something that isn't that. I can't <laughs> anti-prove my point while I'm making it. <laughs> I do like that there are enough like bridging things between those though. But the thing yeah. that I find with Incant is the more heavily you focus on Incant, the more kind of like exponentially you can go. It's true. With it. It's true. It will. It does pop off. Yeah. So instantly, what I'm seeing here is a Hellvent in Ring Three and a Stygian mm. banner with a Merchant of Steel next to it in ring two, giving us the yeah. opportunity to take the Cold Channel as our frontline unit, get mm. a Siren or, well, either of the Sirens, name, Nameless Siren would even be great, or yeah. possibly yeah. even just the, the large Shark. Get Shark yeah. here and oh. then dupe it. Double D upgrade. Dupe dupe. Shark is is absolutely a winning strategy, yeah. And, and, and so this this shows, though, we, you know, one thing that we really need to be thinking about is how do we maximize? And I haven't talked about this in the whole series yet, but I'm realizing how important it is. Hmm. How do we maximize money coming out of the first fight? Yes. Because our merchant is more expensive now, too. And so should we be skipping one of the cards? How do we make sure we get the collector? Like, we need to do everything we can mm -hmm. to get that cash. The variability of the cost of the uh, the most powerful gem, I don't necessarily know what we call them. Is there like a name for the, the unique gem in each store? Uh, there, there is. Each individual enhancement is does have a unique name, yeah. Major enhancement? Is that enhancement? what you're talking about? No, I mean like, oh, like a categorical I, difference. I, I typically call them tier three and tier one enhancements, but there is no <laughs> basis no to that. It's tier, it's tier three because it's in the third slot, but tier one is tier two. And so, no, I, 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 we shouldn't use my terminology, that's for sure. I love the disrespect of the tier ones that is shown <laughs> by going tier one and tier three. It kind of reminds me of, <laughs> so I, I was eight years old and I was in a, a soccer team, right? Yeah. They were the, uh, the, the Bexley Bombers. Uh, I'm, I'm Sydney based. I'm, I'm relatively open about the kinds of like areas that I have lived in, in the past. Sure. Sure. So our Bexley Bombers, uh, eight year old team had a, uh, an eight A, we had an eight B and then we had an eight D. We skipped <laughs> straight over C class and I was... We don't talk about C. Exactly. We, we don't need oh, to mention man. them, but the disrespect of being yeah. in a D-class when we could have been the C-class, but... They could just call you C. Nope. If they just That's called funny. us C and also still put us in the D-league, I would have been happy mm -hmm. with that. <laughs> I don't know if the eight-year-old me was uh, ready for that knock to my self-esteem. I didn't even know That's... what self-esteem meant at the time. It is pretty brutal. It is pretty brutal. So I'm I'm <laughs> leaning cold channel here, kind of as a, a, a broad value judgment of how often we are going to get a frontliner versus a backliner in these two clans. It feels like yeah. there are the two sharks. There's a God of the Unnamed. There's a Titan Sentry. Those are both frontliners. Mm -hmm. And then almost everything else in both of these clans for me right now is a backliner. 
Yeah, yeah. I think that's pretty fair. The other way to think about this is you take Dire Channel if you want the champion to help more with killing frontline enemy units versus getting AoE out of your champ. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Ooh. We have a couple consume already, but... We do, but they're not necessarily consumes we want to get back consistently. Yeah. Icicle Fracture has one downside, which is a lot of the cards in our deck we will definitely want to cast, and their cost is another card in mm -hmm. hand. So a lot of the time this won't even trigger for us, at least in the early yep. game. Yep. I have a wild proposition. Is it money? Take money. Oh, I love it. <laughs> I love it. Because if we do a two upgrade unit yeah. that has reasonable yeah. upgrades on it, we're going to the moon, baby. We're going to the moon. Yeah. No, there's there's no... We won't stomp in space. <laughs> I like the idea of them taking a pit stop in space. Like, ah, oh, it was <laughs> left by the asteroid, Neil. <laughs> so this is awkward because we want to play all these spells to get shards, but then for them to be useful, we'd have to play out our soul guard on floor one, mm -hmm. and then they're taking so much damage. But we do have reform, and so the question that I had is, are shards preserved through reform? No. And I don't think they are, right? Mm -mm. But But that might be okay. Truthfully. It might just be okay. It, it literally may be the best thing that we can do to play this unit out on floor one and allow them to die. They'll kill the first two rings with the shards that we build up immediately. Mm -hmm. And then that gets enough things out of the way for us to have a chance to kill collector row two or row or top, top two rows. How is it going to kill the collector? We, it won't, but we'll get other things out of the, the other units out of the way so that we can hopefully get to the back line, right? So we will have killed the foot soldier here, and we will do three frost to the front. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we're, we're never getting to row two collector unless we do row two soul guard, huh? Which I don't think is impossible. It yeah. does devoid us of the ability to actually get value out of the two energy siphons here, so we only do get two shards, but it does mm -hmm. give us also the ability to try and find later on some sort of creative accounting to get mm -hmm. like a train steward to take two of the hits and then the soul guard yeah. takes the final hit clearing the row of everything except for a disciple protector we can take it that's hit not for bad a disciple protector that's not bad i like row two here and i actually like but then i do like casting the siphons and the foregone power on oh but we don't have any damage spells do we none other than titan's tooth well we have titan's tooth oh yeah, yeah. and it does five so if we cast mm -hmm. both of them that would be 15 plus the frost at six that actually clears. So if we went Energy Siphon, Energy Siphon, Foregone, first row, and then Hollow Drippings with Soul Guard second, it's pretty good. It's only one shard set up, but that's enough to kill the back line as it is. Yep, I like it. Cool. We're getting to that stage. I'm really, really excited because we're getting to that stage to where microing more. Yeah, look, look what we did. Look mm -hmm. what we did. <laughs> Yes! We're going to get so rewarded in these next covenants from being really thoughtful about a couple fights. I yeah, love that. especially collectors in the first couple fights. Just Yes. The, the, the way that you can get that to snowball, especially with the Ring 3 Hellvent, is just mm -hmm. monumentally of importance. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Unfortunately, we can't just get a single train steward to block the right hits here and then take the right damage on the Soul Guard. Can we have them have one die on row one so we can reform it? Mm-hmm. Definitely. And I feel that that's pretty useful, actually. We'll have to get back to a hollow dripping. We might want to leave a hollow dripping in the draw, honestly. Oh, it's only mm. two ways. But we would, we would end up trying to play it out on, like, the top row or something. We would draw to it. We would be able to play it, but it is awkward. It feels like maybe removing that from the deck and trying to cycle back to more frost for when the boss comes in. Mm. might be the way that i want to go with it yeah Would. but <laughs> we'll have to see our comments we'll have to see our comments for now at least we can get some value kind of want to sack the second as well do we do enough damage if we set them up top row to kill this front unit or are we just calling that one hit on this on this on the pyre so it's taking seven to deal four back um so what? It's it's got the incant trigger for one frostbite from this turn. So it is. Wait, it's taking the. Where is it taking all of the seven damage from? Oh, we can give it more if we play these two spells. We'll have more shards. Mm-hmm. 
Well, I mean, this always gets played on this floor. There's no reason not yeah. to. Yeah. Okay, We're so getting pretty close to being able to kill this thing. Nine takes it down to the 15. Top floor would be... Well, I mean, the extra frostbite after that point would be another six. So 15, six, nine. And then an extra strike. And then, yeah, I think we're fine. This goes to the top floor. Yeah, we got him. Now it's, do we burn this? Right, exactly. I feel it's more valuable to us. Uh, no. How much... What's our cutoff point for the bottom row? Pretty... Cut off point how so? Okay, yeah, it's be I think it's better held because we're not we're only getting hit once anyway. So the one extra shard is not gonna get us over a threshold for like one pyre hit. Yeah. On the front liner. Such it also might crowd. be to keep the soul guard alive for an extra turn. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, by putting a burnout train steward in front of it to take a couple hits. Mm-hmm. So this is just a foregone power to get that kill, saves us four damage. I I could honestly leak four damage there without being too sad about it. Right, right. If it saves us six. Mm-hmm. Six and then nine. Okay, so the train suit in the front line would go down and then the Disciple of Protector would be able to kill the last one. It doesn't save the Soul Guard at all, but... But it... But it... But it does what? That's the thing, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it does nothing, right? How much... But it can't take two hits either super awkward i mean i guess what it does is it dies it doesn't matter where we play it we play it somewhere and it dies so that we can cycle even more hmm. playing spells on this floor at least is also giving us a little bit more frost on the front liner nice nice shards at six so the force disciple is going to kill this in return it's going to take 10 damage at the end of this turn and then 9 at the end of the next turn. So this gets 2 strikes on the Pyre unless we hit it with the Foghorn Power or we can hit this one here to prevent 1 strike. Although there's Titan's Tooth to potentially kill it up top. Sure. So we should Foghorn Power the top. Okay. Right, because it's 1's guaranteed. Like, maybe we end up Titan's Toothing the bottom row. Yeah, that, is... that was my worry. Like, Titan's yeah. Tooth feels like it's restricted to the bottom after that point anyway. That's fine. This is yeah. This is going below the 10. I, I yeah, because we played that one extra. It's the, it was the one extra spell. Ah. Oh man. So is this is this foregone first because we always need to play Titan's Tooth, and so we can't afford to play the two train stewards. Yeah. I think so, right? I, I was actually gonna go Titan's Tooth then foregone. I was even gonna deprive myself of the ability to do it in that order. <laughs> yeah. We gotta we gotta take the gamble because then we can play them out, right? Mm -hmm. That would have been ideal. Oh, we still have sixty pyre health base too. Oh, so Titan's Tooth back again. And this time, we can guarantee it, can't we? Primitive, foregone, foregone. Yes. Yes, because we have an odd amount of foregone powers. Nice. Oh my gosh. Wow. Frost is good. <laughs> As I've it decided. turns out. <laughs> Frostbite, good. Frost? Frostbite, good. That was six damage. That could mean so much worse. Yeah. Although, I will say that DLC spoilers coming, slight mm -hmm. spoilers, with vague spoilers, um, certain very, very strong endgames do not feel as consistently easily strong against Divinity. Last Divinity is a very different fight. Mm-hmm. Last Divinity. I've, I've, I've said it before in kind of like a comparison towards the Corrupt Heart, because that's obviously like the, yeah. the comparison that most people are drawing at this point. Um, sure. The comparison that I want to make is it feels like in both circumstances you have to consider the final boss as you are creating your deck for the rest of the run. Yes. And initially, back when the Corrupt Heart came out, I wasn't a huge fan of that. I felt like yeah. there are a huge amount of decks that work in this game, but they just don't work against the Corrupt Heart. Oh, uh, it's yeah. taking out fun things that I can do. Um, <laughs> right, right. But also, at the time, I was playing in a very, very narrow way. Right. Uh, like, I was very much, I will take the shiv cards or the poison cards. N right. Never, nary shall the two meet. <laughs> and I found a lot more versatility oh, as soon as I kind of disabused myself of that in certain circumstances. Absolutely. There's, there's definitely fun in the other direction, but, you know, all things in moderation, including moderation. 100%. Speaking of, I think this is always Crypt Builder. Ooh, I, I thought you were going to tell been me the recently Titan's Gratitude. Bitten. Oh, I love Titan's Gratitude, but we have Exile. We already have five discard cards in the base deck. Like, yes, 
probabilistically, sometimes we'll get Sneko'd and we just won't be able to line it up, which means we have to play around it. But yeah, it's great. Curious, right? Very curious. I'm still leaning towards trying to get the money and uh, yeah. going heavily into Stygian, but that is my attempt to create an engine before we even get to... I actually think the money is fine here because random reform is good enough as reform for us in 90% of cases. We can build around it. Like, random doesn't have to be scary for us. We are exiled on the other... Big boy. Big, big boy. That's one large man, though. It is. It's a sizable dude. You just can't deny that. You can't, right? But... So my previous idea was, you know, we're five capacity, we mm -hmm. get a two capacity unit from the Sigian banner, we double upgrade it, we go for the hell vent, we end up with just two units like that. We get to put them both <laughs> on the same floor after we get the Talus, the Soul Sucker, or possibly mm -hmm. we get a copy of Dazed as we're going through. Now nice. it feels like we go Dazed to try and dupe the big sludge. If we see Dazed after this, because this is the last opportunity we even get to see Dazed. Then we go to the Hellvent, otherwise we go to the Merchant of Steel and maybe even set up yeah. a secondary floor. I I am not... I'm struggling to see the specific path as well, but I know one thing, which is that we are partner clan melting remnant right now, which makes this big sludge excellent. Oh, I wasn't even thinking about that in particular. I was thinking like Soul Guard does AoE, big sludge get big. Yeah, but how do you make him big? You need things dying, and ideally, well, no, he's harvest. Mm -hmm. Wait, no, he's harvest. Yeah. yeah, so your own units dying will help, and we can cycle our own units. You can't turn That's, him down. Premium, he's premium. Is it still Merchant of Steel now, right? Because if we don't want to hedge our bets in the direction of trying to end up with you know your mm. dazed and then your dupe, we do have yeah. a Merchant of Steel in the next area. It's true. It's true. So the, basically the question comes down to, is there a strong reason to need to go Merchant of Steel first? Or is there a big difference between a, the two banners? Right? Mm -hmm. Would we rather see a Melting Remnant unit? And I don't know. I, I know. Hmm. I feel like I don't want the Melting Remnant banner units. I want the units they'd offer me as a spell. I know, right? Like drafts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or some of the tome or tombs or Yeah, I kind of agree. Well, yeah, in the encant it makes it a bit more compelling. Try to go get if we just got plus ten MP on this crypt builder, I mean we're already halfway mm -hmm. to endgame in terms of our frontline killing, right? That plus improving the Titan's gratitude. We certainly do have a bunch of spells to improve upon, starting to make primitive molds cheaper too, so they're easy to play to move us towards that draw gem. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm. <laughs> uh, that is a moment that a lot of people were pointing to and they were saying like <laughs> oh if there was a face cam on this series i would have loved to see just the minutes I, of both of you died i died i died i was reborn during that episode absolutely <laughs> my inclination is we just go right dude i think we're overthinking this yeah we want to put upgrades on these units yeah i, I think you're right God. Mm, what are we about to draft? Let's see this banner. We have enough money to buy all three of these things too, which is cool. You got a siren, right? You do, but now I'm tempted to go back in the other direction. Of what? Sweep? Oh, go to the other no, side? Oh, yeah, of trying to go for the siren, trying to reroll here, trying to get something like a, like a multi-strike or just stat increase again and then trying to go for the dupe and the capacity. Well, the endless is unfortunately, I think, not that ain't, that ain't it. Mm. Unless we wanted to put endless on a sweeper just to make sure that we could always kill backliners and then we dissolve that role for our, or we reduce that role for our, our lead or something. But no, I think if we had found shark there, this endless looks great. Exactly. Endless plus 25 on the shark and then just duping it, put them on two different yep. floors. Like, yep. what more do you want? Yeah. Burnout 1 plus Endless is kind of cute, actually. <laughs> that's that's the reason I would have wanted, like, literally any tomb. 
<laughs> Remnant <laughs> yeah. 2 would be so good with the Burnout 1 yeah. and Endless. Just every single yeah. turn have three Harvest Triggers for the, the Giant Sludge. Oh my gosh, right? So, so do we hold the money for the next Merchant of, Magi uh, Merchant of Steel and just go Merchant Steel, Merchant <sighs> Steel? We've got to at least re-roll and look, right? Because we've now got two units that desperately want multi-strike. Well, do we want to put health on someone? Oh, but then we're below. We spend 85. Mm -hmm. We would have too little money. Yeah, exactly. We need to, we need, we need to re-roll here, I think. I think we're losing too much potential value if we don't. Am I, am I being overzealous? I don't know. I think you may be. So yeah. the only reason I feel that is because it feels like at no point now are we going to this hell vent. So yeah. we have a Stygian banner over here as well as a Merchant of Steel. This Stygian banner could be yeah. a shock. Could yeah. easily be a shock. Um, and then we have three mm. different units that share different upgrade trees and the ability yeah. to re-roll in this Merchant of Steel and purchase Wait. two more important tier threes. Yes? Then I know what the answer is. What is it? <laughs> it's finally here. We need a little bit of help tanking and a little bit of help scaling our units. <laughs> All right. All right. Come on, say You know it. what it is. You already know what say it is. Say those three words and I'm all yours. <laughs> I and upgrade and steward. Hell yeah. Plus we got to do it? it. We it's it may be Wickstone, but it could be both. This gives us a unit who's guaranteed to burn out and who will also block at least two hits when they bring them in. Can start feeding the big slime with this. And if we start reforming them, especially with the plus five burnouts in the deck, this this unit really can, like, just carry our next couple rings. Just so as a stat. It stands in front of. It stands big wherever sludge. you need it to. It can stand in front of Big Sludge and die. It can take some hits to save one of our other units, like in front of Siren of the Sea. We can just use it to do the damage at the end of the fight by reforming it a couple times and then burnout extending mm -hmm. it does it does all the stats that we need it to do right now okay we have sweep going into this fight shouldn't be too much of an issue though ah we have created a steward yes <laughs> it had to happen eventually it was coming oh wow. curious right i think like literally i think we leaked that whole top row just take nine set up bot yeah agreed this is the... Okay, cool. Oh, we don't even have the capacity limitation yet? When's that come in? 20. Ah. Uh, it's right. pretty high up. It's a nasty one. This is what I find myself doing a lot of the time with the clergyman early. Especially because mm. this row is... Oh. That truly is incredibly disappointing. But what are you going to do, right? Yeah, no kidding. Damn. Hey, we got the double hollow drippings for the, the trans though. Yeah, <laughs> just leave them at their current stat point and and play them out. Honestly, right? Like big sludge train steward, hallowed. It's not it's not bad as a mid row right now. Clean things up. Is it mid row or is it top row? So in top row, the burnout uh, the train steward takes minimal damage compared to its HP. It takes the twelve, but the mm. forge disciple is taking three more damage, so it's twenty four by the time it comes up here. And then there's the train mm. steward in the big sludge. And then all we and need is it... supplementary damage from like one forgotten power in uh, order to get the first get harvest. harvest. I see what you're saying. I like that. I like that. Cool. Do we actually then not hallow drippings there and reform them? What's our reform draw? Should be high, right? We've got three of them left in there. Three out of 15. So hit rate is, is pretty good, actually. Yeah. That's probably preferable because then we don't even actually have to use the Forgotten Power here as well, giving us the ability to go yep. for more encants on the bottom line. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. Are like we it. are we gonna like hard commit to this just being hit by reform? So we like double hallow drippings bottom? I think it's frequently gonna be the play. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Cool. Hello dripping looks like incant. Almost exactly like it. Curious. <laughs> I yeah, like the idea of casting like incant and in incant cards on this floor to then support this one. Right, right. It's very like brain breaking. Every time I do that, I feel that I have to totally reset my my whole brain. <laughs> I miscounted the damage, but it's because this is dazed. Damn. <laughs> wah, wah. <laughs> We've got a foregone power. We can kill it off. It's all we, good. We can. We can. Yeah, we got it. 
that's good. Um, oh, and we can clear this middle row too. Nice. Nice. Everything's coming up, Tiki. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. Ooh. Wow. So, okay, so math, quick, quick intuitive math. Is it better to foregone power first or train steward first? It has I think to it's be foregone cool. power first. I, it, yeah, it has to be foregone power first because the, yep. the recovery is if you play train steward and then foregone hits foregone, the end of your turn is sad. <laughs> yes, yes, agreed, agreed. There we go. And yet you and can now recover we heavily. Oh, let's go, dude. Total Hell overkill. Yeah. Complete and total overkill. <laughs> I love that we've just got a unit on the top floor that is completely ready for the fight and will not mm -hmm. ever be part of it. Offering mm -hmm. token. Over the targeted damage of Flash Freeze? Yes. I don't necessarily know that it's right for what it's worth, but I do see this as a weakness of the deck right now. Is when we need to particularly shoot at a unit who might be in second position or back position or a collector. We we have no no ability to do so, other than Titans too. That is true, but also like having a single flash freeze in the deck as the the way you're intending on possibly yeah. dealing with some of those feels. I mean, it is you're a step in the right direction. Stuff in. Yeah, I, um, I think offering token here is fine. My movement towards offering token is very largely based on it feels like we are definitely going to have at least part of our toolkit as heavy in can, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. offering token is it's just absolute godsend in the first it's, cycle. It's it's totally a puzzle piece. I agree. But we never find another flash freeze. But we never find another offering token either. No, no, and and I think between the two, the offering token is the more compelling. I agree. Dripful. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We've seen what this can do. <laughs> I don't think there is that, that one's that's just a nice piece. Agreed. It's going to do it again. Ooh. Okay, okay. Quick. Not bad. In can't gain armor. Oh, now we're getting spicy. I don't think we need more. Don't you? No, we'll just buff up the one and then we can dupe it if we want later on. Wow. You get more money economy out of it this way, right? You do, but the Nameless Sirens rage. W what? The Nameless Siren is rage, so it's growing its damage twice versus the Siren of the Sea. Oh! Oh, we have, we have a Siren of the Sea. Yes. Right. This is the other siren. We're looking at a different card. Mm -hmm. It's not the same card. Right, 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 right. Gosh, so we're going to take on and enhance three units. That is really expensive, and we've got two and steel early. And try to, like, overstack that with drip ball. That, so I mean, it could be a winning line. It could be. Very much, like, the, the plan that I was considering here mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. is we end up putting the... Soul Guard, as well as the Siren of the Sea, this gets the plus two armor from Incant. Uh, yeah, so yeah. the front line becomes Soul Guard with the Siren of the Sea behind it. The Capacity the Gem Siren gives us the that. ability to put the Nameless mm -hmm. Siren behind that naturally. Then we descend the big sludge. We give Quick mm -hmm. to the Nameless Siren here. Um, mm -hmm. that, so that, That's a massive line. Yeah. Yeah, that's a massive line. That is pretty good, man. Yeah. It gives us the ability to kind of like simplify yeah. what we're doing to a single floor kind of solution of it it does preclude Which our ability to nice. use like tombs and stuff like that later on though how are you gonna place them yeah at least there right the so the biggest downside is that this means that we'll have fights to where big sludge doesn't come out until turn three which yes. can make you know setting up and, and establishing harvest a little bit more difficult um but having even more unit scaling is really, really nice. And especially having one unit who's scaling rapidly who can quick kill something to save us a little bit of life. As long mm -hmm. as we can keep it over the threshold for frontliners. Okay, okay. Well, I do like units. Uh, and, and so I'm not opposed to this. And I think that unit-based endgame comps do tend to be both simpler and stronger if you can set them up. Mm. And this one is... I see the path. Let's Let's do it. Let's take it. Let's do it. Okay. Should we visit the concealed carry before we do any of this? Caverns, wow. 
What the hell? I, it's going to be our concealed carry. <laughs> what do you got? Oh, a couple nameless siren. It's no big deal. Legal. I have a permit. I have a permit for these sirens. I think we should upgrade first in case we can drop off with the the forgotten winged. Get triple upgrade going. Ooh, but are many of these upgrades going on the same unit? Because quick is there. Um, quick. Incant Armor is there. there. And then we reroll, right? Yes. And get more. We could end up with a double upgraded Siren of the Sea, and then I would be perfectly happy to send that. Send and, that to the barn. <laughs> and then... <laughs> we'll be strong enough. With the double upgraded Siren of the Sea, what we're, like, not using the Nameless Siren anymore? It's fine if it's a dead pick. No, no, no. We t we double... We end up with a, just a stat double upgraded Siren of the Sea, and then we send that to the winged... Ah, oh, right, right, right. And I see to it, get I see the third it. upgrade, right? Yeah. <laughs> or hell, we could send off the big sludge for now just because the cost down would be really huge for us. Is quick the wrong choice? I don't think so. I feel quick is very reasonable here. But how long is it, it not going to scale faster? Enough? Yeah, exactly. Right? So it's getting the so four saying. extra damage per turn. It's losing two of the extra damage per turn. We, like, yeah. our first couple of hands are going to be minion heavy. But we do have a lot of zero cost spells. So they're, they're able to be played in around the margins. You know why quick is the wrong choice? Quick is the wrong choice because if we take quick and this other upgrade and then reroll, we won't be able to buy multi. And I think that's more important. Okay. That's, yeah, that's a clincher right there. Yeah. There's the multi. Mul that's 100%, Hell yeah. right? 100% and send some up. damage, right? Send it. Full send. I I kind of want to go for the, the Hearthstone on the Siren and then just plus 10 on the Nameless. Really? And save a slot for Big Sludge? Yeah. I'm very tempted by plus 10 on Big Sludge just to get two Harvests online, but I, I can see good. the other as well. I, I will say that 10 times two right now on Big Sludge is like perfectly good for the next couple rings. And so if we want to see more of a splash out of Nameless Siren, plus 10 is probably better now, right? I, I see that. Well, I think we know we want plus 25 on the Siren of the Sea to have a secondary tank. Yes. I like that. Definitely. Yeah. Is the Nameless I'm, Siren performing anything unique anymore? It's scaling just slower big than Big Sludge if we just use spells correctly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. It's just additional damage. It's additional damage, but it is like it's it's the reason we would take an energy gem pass. Sorry, an energy gem, a capacity gem past this point. Capacity. So if we don't do that, that's like Soul Guard plus Siren, and then descend the big sludge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Game plan. I mean, I would. I I think I would go draw gem first anyway. Mm -hmm. Genuinely, be and and not worry too much about creating the world's most stacked, you know, end game Hellborn line. Yep. But we might end up in a position where we find that that's helpful. Oh. Oh no. Dante, why? I didn't consider the Dante. I mean, oh yes, to be clear, but oh no, we could have Well, we wouldn't have Dante yet. To also we have to be hold clear, his candle. Though, what if oh no though? <laughs> I know, it's almost never correct to turn Dante down. <laughs> we have two cards in the entire deck that are affected by spell power. We care a lot about making sure yeah. we draw a maximum yeah. amount of spells to cast for the sake of the incants. So we can also get the early kills on the right units. We don't want to delay true. our drip fall at all if we can avoid it. It's true. And we don't really have a place to put it. And we've already spent a huge amount on upgrades. The Merchant of Steel that comes up next is three rings from now in the Wildwood. But Dante is more than just Dante. Dante is also Dante's cloak. It is, but we've only got the two magic power spells at the moment. We've got the That's true. the Crypt That's true. as well as the Titan's Tooth. Let Dante grow more powerful. Stay in train. Leave leave Dante at the breeder. <laughs> I think we have to leave okay. Dante at the breeder. Okay, okay. No, no, no. I like it. I like it. This is when I don't pick Grand Finale, it makes it even more powerful when I do again, you know? Mm -hmm. Part of part of showing true love is the willingness to restrain. So that it's not just it's not just a meme. You don't do it because you do it. You do it because you love it. Yep. And because you want to. This love is unconditional. However, I can love <laughs> you and still turn you down. <laughs> However, just... today. 
<laughs> you keep biting my hand, Junior. So you're going into the crate. <laughs> These candles, they suck, Dante. You got to work on this. Please, Dante. <laughs> turn up when I have steel ahead of me rather than behind me. As mm. This is on you, Dante, frankly, as far as I'm concerned. You get extra oh, plane on. <laughs> I was Whatever. trying to think of like a like a a, a pithy end bit there, and I was yeah. like, there is nothing that isn't a swear word that correctly punctuates the end of that, and I'm not not doing it. Uh, that's funny. We set up. It's weird because if we set up mid, we're getting hit. Yeah. So it's like, and that's not expendable HP. Honestly, set up top is all right, but then then what do we do? What do we how to how to jerk fall? We don't. How to, I, I right? think we're actually currently in overkill with the, the, the big sludge. If we just have soul guard and the big sludge up here on the top floor and the big sludge keeps growing yeah. larger, we just like chump dukes in front of it later. Sorry, train skewers in front of it later. We'll be completely fine. The mid floor can even be nameless siren played out now and mm. then getting the other siren directly in front of it later on. Okay. I don't think it's a problem. It, it's just, yeah. not, it's not our original plan. Yeah, but it's awkward, but it's fine. Agree. It do. It do. I agree that it do. Hmm. Nowhere I probably should have gone for right? more incants here, so the double primitive. Turns seem fine. It's not half bad. The steward will protect you. Actually, do we want to lose harvest, right? It's like... Yeah, I guess having these units die is fine. Oh, we have reform. Right. We do. So we don't even want to foregone power this floor. We want them all foregone to die on top. top. Yeah. Oh, foregone power. To <laughs> I can't believe I forgot that. But thankfully... I, genuinely, we are so strong. That is all the HP they need. Yeah. Foregone. Do we need to put the Siren of the Sea down on a different floor? Well, we foregone first. Oh, I see, because then you wouldn't have Siren and C. I see what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Honestly, we're probably going to end up having to put a train steward up in front of this sludge, and then we just need it to be big enough. It's already doing enough to kill the frontliners, and it will be able to kill the double frontliners in two, two turns. Mm. We just need to be sure that we can kill the foot soldiers, which we've got. I think we can leave Siren of the Sea in the deck. It honestly might be a good second cycle draw. Put out front. Okay. Dig it. Can you dig it? And now we've got a bunch of frost. Hell yeah. Hell yeah, indeed. We may need to just Titan's Tooth this bottom floor, though, because the Soul Guard's going to be dead by the time they're all yeah, over stacking it. True. Well... Yeah, and then we don't have any other way to kill them. Yeah, no, you're right. You're right. So then, do we foregone power the bottom lane for the off chance that we then get to play the other cards? No, we play all no, of the other cards so. first, and then we just foregone power Titans to the bottom line. So that bottom would line? be okay. Dripful Soul Guard to... Actually, Soul Guard survives three hits on this line, getting some extra Frostbite on the Talus. Then we put the trains you with burnout on the top line. Uh, which means actually no, then we wouldn't kill all of these. Hang we on. We wouldn't kill the back. Yeah. Eh, that's more tricky than we need to be. Right. Let's just pop two train stewards down on the midline and be fine with it. Okay. Almost look like two train swords bot lane, and then we don't have to worry about AoE on that lane. Or we frostbite at Clean. the same time. Clean. All right, we're super comfy now. There's nothing really yeah. to be done. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Block for us, stewage. Oh yeah, it's perfect. Get him. That's pretty safe GG for this fight. One not one to GG. GG early, but I don't think that it's early. I'm not one to GG early, but no re. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost lethal on the bottom line. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> it's 
ridiculous. We didn't even do anything. It's the frostbite. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. Oh, played out. We win. Get him. <laughs> Big Sludge, you're not Bye. allowed to play. That's our best cheerleader. Oh, man. Some cards. Holy. Ain't they just... I mean, we're going to be putting more spells in the deck, so Ancient Synergy has obvious placement. It's also the ability to hit the front line, which is something we were trying to address with the Crypt Builder. It's great with Energy Siphons. It's mm -hmm. it's a reliable targeting mechanism. Mm -hmm. I'm also Siren very song, tempted though. by Siren Song. Yeah. <laughs> yep. It's a really incredible source of Dazed, which is in increasingly looking like a potential in-game for us. Mm -hmm. It's a really great way... So, okay, so we take frontline damage to kill frontliners so that we don't leak pyre damage. Yes. That's the end goal. Why do you kill frontliners? To make sure that you don't lose all your creatures so, and, and to not leak pyre damage. Why do you kill backliners? Same reason and to prevent effects. And then you kill the boss to also not leak pyre damage. That's really the end goal. Siren Song is like frontline damage because days three is enough to not leak pyre damage for almost every fight in the game. Right? Mm-hmm. And it's at one cost. It's We've got Frost going on, so if we're setting up first or second row or we're frosting any other way, it's also a nice way to provide a finisher. This is a really, really good card. That's, I would say, even more versatile than Ancient Synergy at two uh, less. I have only one reason I don't mm. love it in this specific circumstance. Okay. And it's because Ancient Synergy can trigger harvests on the floor of the Big Sludge, whereas Siren mm -hmm. Song dictates that the units die on that other floor. They yeah, die next yeah. to the pile where the Sludge can't be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's true. That's true. Lining up more harvest is uh, it's a big deal, and it's relevant. Absolutely. Energy? We have some energy troubles right now. We do. Going to need some Merchants of Magic. I mean, but that is what's up in the future, right? We got the Merchant of Magic here. Yeah. I mean, it's across the road from a uh, Hersel Sword as well as we've got Boon, so it's yeah. a bit rough. Yeah. The other one is against a Merchant of Magic, oh, though. Oh, so We don't have any money. Trick is rather... mm -hmm. Yeah, we probably are going right. Well, I mean, if we are and going right in these both of them, right? Getting the money and then spending right the money. Mm. Do, wait, we do we go, go right left? Merchant of Trinkets. We could go right left this with is, the Forgotten Boon. This is a Merchant yeah. of Trinkets next to a Hersel Sword. We could be stacked on relics early. That's true. It's true. It's very true. Yeah. It, it just depends on where our money is after this next one. If we kill Collector and get money from it, plus the Forgotten Boons, we'll be in a position to maybe buy Ooh. a Trinky. Wait a second. Wait a second. Wait a second. How about this, mm. though? We go here. We go to the first Merchant of Magic. We're just mm. going for a, a negative 20. If there's a plus 10, we'll take that as well. Right, so we're not mm -hmm. going for the upgraded uh, versions. I mean, I don't think there are even that many super like tier threes that we definitely want to put on things right now. Sure. Um, hold over on the offering token excluded. But right. we do that. We hit the double unstable portal for the double removal. We hit another unstable mm -hmm. portal for a double removal over here. As no, but then the merchant trinkets isn't getting his value. Never mind, that doesn't work. And what are you trying to get out of the deck super fast? I mean, if you're removing the spells, you're weakening the ancient <laughs> synergy. You can remove some train stewards right now. I think that's totally reasonable, yeah. I would keep the one. This is a useful spell. Mm -hmm. It would be like train steward, train steward, train steward, primitive mold, probably trying to decrease the average cost of the deck as well as increase our ability to hit incants early enough to actually try and get this yeah. build off. That's pretty reasonable. That's true. Hmm. Okay, let's take your line. Let's go Let's go. ancient synergy. I think we'll be happy to have the damage in the end game. It's compelling scaling the, the sludge. Okay. Skip for gold. Yeah, we just we now have to look very carefully for our plan for how we're going to survive long enough to kill Seraph. Yes, that's that's maybe the biggest thing that we, the option that we lose the most, by not taking, by not taking Siren Song. Truthfully, I think in general the game will be harder, but we will scale the the sludge a bit better this way. I, I would agree with that. I don't know if it's going to be too bad against the the Seraph. And the only reason I say that is because Solgar the Martyr, like it, it has a bad health stat at the very first level for its uh, for its mm -hmm. uh, Frost Channel, but, but then it it goes up, takes off ridiculously. It's like fifty, mm -hmm. then one hundred and forty or something like that. So yeah, I'm quickly yeah, double yeah. check that. 
Um, yeah. We don't really have the ability to support its health, which is the thing that, to me, is the most jarring and why I want the ability to deal with frontliners before they make their attack. Yeah. 70! Wow, it's actually... Wow, that's way lower than I thought it was. It's literally half of what I said. Okay, I'm actually feeling less, a little less confident right now, but it's fine. Gonna have to kill things quick. Killing days. Do we... Do we ever want to just have a big nuke for making sure we get the the harvest train going? I could see doing this and then potentially even duping this card. Is there ever a world where we get the collector from this and turn down enough cards to purchase a trinket? And having not taken Forgotten Boons? No. No, we're basically going right for removal in Herzl's. Out of here. Out of here. We'll come back to that in just a second. Other than that, this is just Cold Channel 2, I believe. I think so. I agree. Oh, and I want to get to two, two Frostbite. Because that could be part of our answer to Seraph is just scaling Frost really fast. Mm -hmm. and, they're, and we'll line them up every once in a while too, so... I kind of want to hold the money. And just say Crypt Builder does enough? It does enough for right now. It's like two rounds from now that we're going to be wondering yeah. if the Surge Stone was the correct pick. By that point, I'm kind of hoping we've managed to ball out of control with something else, but I'm not I'm not seeing what it is. Like, yeah, we've got the Crypt yeah. Builder, the Ancient Synergy, the Big Sludge. We can try and use those to get those off correctly and early. We're really not far from in-game. It's just a few good picks and some nice micro. It's just micro intensive. You know what our second Weak brutally unit the next comps area is? And reform. Yeah, it's micro intensive. What is it? It's train steward nameless siren. Stop really? choking up the early draw with the, the siren of yeah. the sea as well as the big sludge and just focus on yeah. this is our damage, this is our health, this is our yeah. AoE. That's perfectly acceptable to take a unit and then end up deciding that they don't fit. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It was information that was provided to us after the fact that really mm -hmm. gave us the ability to do that, right? The the multi-strike coming out that early on the big sludge. If that wasn't there, suddenly we don't have the ability to take out enough frontline big units for it to actually yeah. be comfortable. So these clipped wing, 95s. clipped guardian, 95s, they get to 105 later on, I think, right? Mm -hmm. in, the, in the C's, C20s. And we've got, that's, a, that's not the haster, right? That's the multi-strike? Enchanter? That's the haster. That's the haster, okay. Which means also this is haste boss. Mm-hmm. Row one or five. It's probably gonna want to be one. <sighs> Question is, can we take this? I think we can. And I think we should. We can't set up on floor three. We can't no, do the trick we're setting up, we do that. We're setting up row one. We're getting enough frost to reduce, to make the clipped guardians get one less hit in. We're going to leak probably two of them. How much damage do they do? Uh, six per. So that may be 36 damage. Would you take 36 damage for an artifact? Unless I had 35 or less health? I so, yes. Right? I think so. <laughs> if I had exactly 36 health, I'd happily take it and die. Yes, I realize I accidentally <laughs> counted that incorrectly. <laughs> Uh, oh, Soul Guard, Big Sludge, all the spells. Can't play all the spells, but Well, all yes. the spells except the Ancient Sinji. Yeah. Which is really too bad, but this is this is the setup, 100%. And the armor here really did us a favor, actually. Careful, we may need, we may need it. <laughs> Can oh, we no. get a floor one kill? Yeah. The, the Big Sludge having multi-strike and just having two harvests on the previous floor is ridiculous. We're going to be fine down here now until the Soul Guard dies. How many spells do we have to play to kill the Frontliner? Remember, Heaven Seal. Um, well, We're it's, it's one Frostbite per... Uh-oh. One Frostbite per... It's a Revenge Trigger. So. Oh, sorry. Uh, so it's nine... We're three per spell. Yeah, and we're 13 off. Okay, so we would have to play five spells or find a source of more damage or play the Forgone Power here. Yeah. And so the question is, is Forgone Power worth 75 gold? 
Yeah. I think this is... You know what we do? We what place Siren of the Sea up top. And we foregone power um, up top too. Play mm -hmm. these other spells out on the bottom, right? Energy, primitive, primitive. Then there's the chance, an off chance, that we're able to kill this unit up top. And if not, you know, we leak a little bit and that's fine. It, it, it would be like a, a large frontline damage spell as well as the Siren of the Sea on the top yes. floor is the kind of thing? Exactly. Like a okay. crypt builder. Yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm happy taking that risk because honestly, I would... At this point, I kind of want to leak 36 just for 75 gold. I'm decreasing <laughs> yeah, yeah. what I want. <laughs> it's a one health for two gold. Yep. That is a brutal return. Stonks on the rise, huh? <laughs> wow. Amazing. Uh, almost. <laughs> I will get this well, I mean, cash. It also has spell weakness. So if we just draw the big spell yeah. next turn, we've got the kill yeah, on it. Yeah, we've got it. We've got it. Exactly. Exactly. You're saying there's a chance. There's oh, yeah. that chance. So we're already Crap. good on the bottom so, line. Do we just play the Crypt Builder out rather than playing Name of Siren up top? I think so, right? And then we just use the cards that have energy on them as fuel possibly for the Foregone Power. So we go Crypt Builder, Hallowed, Foregone, Foregone possibly. I guess, yeah, we, because we're just trying to get in Cant, right? Yeah, if we didn't have Incant to play around, you always try to get the free cast, but mm -hmm. we want to grow the Shardman. It is the far more important thing. Mm -hmm. Speaking thereof, do we want to try it here? Yeah. Go for broke. Eight. Hell yes. You love to see it. Sometimes you go for broke and you don't go broke as a result. Wow, that's deep. Thank you, thank you. I've been working on it for a while. It's going to be one of my cons. Uh, is that mm -hmm. is that said correctly? Koans? What are they said? Uh, what? Uh, it's it's a, a a spiritual term. It's like a high mord moral, if I'm correct. I could easily be completely oh. wrong on that, though. I have no clue what that is, but I believe you. Like they kind Maybe of like this is one of these words that I would need to read and then... Ooh. There we go. Well, energy is no energy. longer a problem. Yeah, because all of our spells are zero or three cost. <laughs> yeah. That's amazing. Is It's early enough that this... And it can be cheated zero cost too. So Unless Guardians we're not Amulet talking about Guardian Time to where there's some rows to where we can't afford to play it because then we don't get hit and then we can't revenge. Mm -hmm. um, but no, I was looking at unnamed tome actually and I was trying to think what major fights we would want to silence. We can silence living armor, but it won't matter. We'll do plenty of damage. Sycophant growth, we can silence. True. We're not fighting Seraph the Patient, so there's nothing to silence there. One floor of Wilt Wings. It's, yeah. it's not hugely impactful right now. The reason I want the Guardian's Amulet is because we are in a clan combination that has very, very large difficulty healing a unit that is actively yes. In, yes. Existence, uh, in existence. So decreasing the damage incoming, while, no, yeah, 100%. sure, we don't want to play it on some of them, is going to keep no. Soul Guard healthier for longer. I think this Guardian's great. We have six discard effects, including one targeted one. 100%. Mm. I know, the Votavary growth phase is... <laughs> And it's energy every turn. Excuse me, I just that burp like snuck up on me. Like it, I got, I was just, <laughs> just mugged by a burp. That's, that's totally okay. Just Didn't even to, come up on mine. Just, just trying to mind my own business. Yeah, Discord denies me some of my most most guttural sounds. I need to figure out how to turn that off. I'm, I don't I'm, want it to have any choice in the matter. I'm actually almost a little sad that it is awful mic etiquette to to belch loudly anywhere near a mic because ah. I am a champion belcher. really really oh Ooh. i'm 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 not but i you know i speak loud and soft and i want it all to come through mm -hmm. discord you can't tell me what's important that i say and what's not it's all unimportant so don't cut any out i really kind of do wish there was like just a service kind of mm -hmm. similar to like tungle or mumble in in ages right. past of just it's going to be mic open on both sides as long as both of the people have a good mic that's going to be it's the premium way to record because yeah it's yeah. like podcasts are recorded on discord or skype and their audio management for those kinds of things is based around low-tier microphones in conference yep. rooms yeah exactly 
but the votary is an extra energy every turn as well as the thing. <laughs> so like j just bringing it back to the votary for a second like <laughs> yeah is and there we ever a world of like if we took a capacity gym before we overstack exactly is there ever a world where it's like votary endless uh, has endless already obviously Hold over the... drip put oh. burnout on it yeah i was thinking burnout yeah wait burnout this is a pretty capacity. this is pretty swag you put burnout on this and then we put holdover on dripfall and <laughs> then we <laughs> which i want to do anyway cuz mm -hmm. it's fantastic i would put holdover on dripfall before for what it's worth i put holdover on dripfall before the offering token in this run wild absolutely that's absolutely, absolutely wild to me i'll, I'll I'm do absolutely it absolutely sure it's of it wild. <laughs> yeah do you want to take it i mean it's not even a priority unit it's not going to cost us much to have it in rotation and it could be cool it also jump blocks, which is like yeah. it's also yeah. HV. Yeah. Like, I'm I'm trying to. It find... really has the synergy right now. It it's, does. It, if if there was ever a run for it, right, this is it, is it not? Yeah, 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 absolutely. I'm gonna click it. If we don't end up click using it. it, we don't end up using it. So what? It's options. We could so actually. Is it... It... Oh gosh. We might actually though. I'm I'm really tempted by left here because then. We get a few more upgrades on things, like actually get some MP mm -hmm. on one of our spells, you know, maybe double stack, some, like double stack the Guardian's Amulet. Mm. Whereas we go right, we can't afford any of the trinkets. That's just a total miss. We get one guaranteed trinket in removals, so it's not like it's a worthless ring, but I think we get more out of the left here. The trinkets are ranging between like 205 and 265 or something right now, right? I think so, yeah, because it was ranged around the yeah, the lowest might have been sub 200 before the 20% increase. Hmm. Right? Like maybe you could, I, I, I genuinely, I, I shouldn't put my foot in my mouth. I don't have a great intuition for what the cost range is, particularly below C25. It's okay. I'm only working off of intuition as well here. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm, I'm thinking like there is a world where we see the options in the merchant trinkets and then decide mm -hmm. whether or not we take the trinket that's offered by the Herzl's Horde based on whether or not we can afford something better in the merchant trinkets with the money. Mm. That's I'm, kind I'm, of an interesting idea. I'm, I'm being too stubborn about the plan that I wanted to go to two floors ago. I, we don't the, need getting to remove the unit removed right now. Lost. Yeah, but we'll get we'll get more removal. It's coming. And we, we aren't very removal hungry this run compared to usual. Double stack. It's pretty good. It does also Just double never... like it, it. Hmm. How many more situations can we not play this in because of the double stack? Well, now that we have flickers liquor, we're gonna. It's gonna be pretty rare for this to be a miss. No, I and don't. We don't want to play it at cost anyway, right? Uh, uh, yeah, I don't mean it's cost. It's. I mean, how many yeah. situations is it gonna prevent any of the enemies from oh. doing damage? Yeah, this, this true, is eight true. less damage on them, so yeah. almost everything except for backline damage units are gonna do no damage on the turn this is played. That said, which might be okay. Yeah, exactly, right? Like yeah. the the uh, the the big sludge is gonna do more than enough. We only need to get hit one time for the sharded, sharded <laughs> for the. For the frostbite mm -hmm. to do the thing we need, which is kill the backliners, right? And we'll be stacking up plenty of damage on the boss. This was a huge store. Do we reroll and get two more base tier ones? Right. I think so. What would the negative cost be on dripfall? A one on dripfall. Yeah. And then the plus MP would be. I mean, we're looking Just for plus ten if builder. it goes on crypt builder. Yeah. Yeah. Is is, is done hitting a plus twenty on Titan two before? Sorry. I've done a plus 20 on Titan's Tooth before and felt good about it. The t 20 and consume. Yeah, how many times are we playing it multiple times in a fight, I guess? Not not very often. Not very often at this at this point. Should we visit the Concealed Cavern? No, wait. Well, I mean, if we go to the Concealed Cavern and it gives us the five dupe, it's Ancient Synergy almost Oh, we can't get time, that anymore. Right? That's, that's only the first Concealed Cavern. Oh, wow. I didn't even know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Presumably because they realized that if you got it too late in the run, you would just always win with the event. Yeah. That is fair, that is fair. But I do try and stack all of my value on individual things, so I guess, like, <laughs> that's why I wouldn't have realized. Mm. Okay. So, interesting. 
isn't this isn't this option one if we're trying to get a little even more consistent at killing frontliners in the end game and hold calcified embers nah we just play them we've got flickers liquor too this oh no i mean like, hold them for a bunch of fights so that we get to use them later is that the idea oh we just use them whenever we need them we just use them now Because by the by by the final ring, I think we're doing absolutely fine. Honestly, there's a large part of me that wants to go dead weights right now penitent. in the penitent. Because that's and just plus get... two for every blight, which is five blights yeah. in the deck after this, which gets yeah, us plus yeah. ten on a big sludge yeah. that's multi-striking. So that's that's twenty extra damage on that big sludge. Soulguard starts attacking, which is kind of funny. Mm-hmm. Gives us the ability to much more easily start achieving our harvest. Hey, actually, I think it's penitent. It's not bad, right? It kind of disrupts our draw, like our encant gets a little less mm -hmm. consistent, and actually, our discard effects get less consistent because we can't clear our hands. Definitely. So that's a cost. And that could easily be a sizable enough cost. Maybe it's a bit cute yeah. going for this, but I, I think it's... At least something to consider. It's real damage. It's a real extra enhancement. Hellbent in the next area. Does that help us make a choice there? This may that may be the choice that pushes me back to hold over on offering token actually. Mm -hmm. Which unfortunately we just missed one, but that's okay. Yeah, there's a hellbent. Yeah, what the heck? And there's a good chance we would go that way. Final ring also hellbent? feels like it's likely a Merchant of Steel, Hellvent, Unstable. What are we Hellventing right now? Like it's Ancient Synergy or Dripfall, right? Ancient Synergy, Dripfall. It's like 1 I cost mean, 120 you... damage to the front line. Right, right. <laughs> a second big sludge. Honestly, not awful. Especially if later on we want to dupe another Dripfall. Yeah, yeah, and then remove the other siren. That is mm -hmm. an incredible, incredible amount of damage. There's no doubt about that. We have the opportunity to actually clinch that at the very end here, right? The unstable vortex mm -hmm. removes both of the sirens. The hellvent gets us our second, either dripfall or uh, or the big sludge, depending on which we dupe in the upcoming hellvent. Merchant yeah. steel, just in case we get pious stone housing, I guess. But mostly, it's just for the value of the two things. So if we take the plus 10 damage here, does it get us over some immediate threshold? Like, does it... Because I wonder if if there's a few specific turns or fights to where this would be really helpful, maybe it's better to take Calcified Ember to do the same role, which is front-loaded damage, and then they get out of the way by the final fight. Let's do the Calcified Ember. I think Flicker's Licker makes this the correct decision between the two of them if we're trying to achieve similar aims. And also, yeah. because I can't directly identify where the penitent remains is going to create yeah. a difference it yeah. feels like it, it's a rare enough circumstance that we can use these three shots no but you know where it did right you know where it did create the difference it's the run where we took dante <laughs> yeah <laughs> so ridiculous <laughs> dante would be absolutely absurd like an molt an eight multi-attack dante just an absolute ridiculous monster oh I'm sad in with retrospect 10, now. With, with, with plus 14 damage or whatever. It's just obscene. Are we, again, no, not no, triple no. gamers? Just Soul Guard, Big Sludge, get him? Triple <laughs> gamers. Yeah, yeah, I think you're right. I think you're right. I think the enemy is die. Tell you what. They often is. Oh. This is Stats. beautiful. One thing we will have to consider is how we're getting to the overcharge tank. We're going to have to kill frontliners at least one yeah. so the big sludge has a hit. Yeah, yeah. Which means we're like considering trying to crypt build on this one or something. Mm -hmm. Super weird, right? Too bad. Ooh. There's just no way for us to kill that backliner, is there? Um, It's close. Uh, no, uh, yeah. maybe, we had a... so 
we we cast <laughs> both primitive molds up here on the top floor, right? So we have two three right. costs and a one and a zero. Both of those, as long as we play the one first, then the zero, we get both of the three costs zero costed. We get to play the whole hand. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, then we but have we can't a... line up one of the kills on the. It, we would we would need one more kill for the frontliners. Yeah, and then we're there. And then we're there. So that's okay. Still think it's the right play, but we just don't get the collector. Yeah, yeah, because we do need to kill off at least one of these, as you said. Agreed. But hey, if we're actually putting cool down play. two minions here in the midline, we can kill a sycophant with those two minions, so we can actually free mm -hmm. up the ability to use the Crypt Builder or Calcified Ember on a different floor, or even Somewhere save else. the Calcified Ember. Yeah, which I'm totally good with. Okay. <laughs> this ain't bad. Are we going to be... How much are we... We're killing four things up top. So mm -hmm. that's rage plus 20. So we're going to be 88 by two. So we're having no trouble killing the defender here. None whatsoever. We can we can play these cards literally wherever we want. Maybe even top row, right? Ah, uh, yeah. One more shard. Good point. Wouldn't have wanted to play the other one top row for the sake of increasing the damage with the rest of them. Mm -hmm. but that's more than fine as it currently stands. We could save 10 damage on the front line using the Ancient Synergy, and I don't feel too bad about that, actually. 100% worth. It is time to vote a very. <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> Are we going to take a slot? I think we, we might. <laughs> kind of tempting. I think we might. That would mm -hmm. give us the right thing. Like, this is fishing for the, the uh, burnout at that point. True. But also, I think we just use spells to defend the Soul Guard at the moment. That's just... Agreed. And then all of the rest of the incants go here on the mid floor because this is... As soon as this incant's enough to kill the Sycophants, it's good enough for this round. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, they're dying anyway. We'll care about some damage for the boss who's teleporting up, but oh yeah, the big sludge is big sludge has a little bit of health too, which is nice. Definitely has at least a little. Some some amount. I haven't checked it in a while, but I'm certain it has health, right? Uh... I'm trying awesome. to get away from using any of the calcified embers too early. Yeah. Although, killing off one frontliner here simplifies our top, doesn't it? Or do we do we have enough damage to kill both? Well, I mean, the, the top is going to die regardless, oh. right? The cool marksman dies and the big sludge just kills two frontliners. So, effectively, okay. it just comes down to whether or not we're going to be able to keep the soul guard around until the boss. I don't think it even matters if we do, as long as we have, you know, reforms still oh. available. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That hey. seemed that seemed golden to me. And we can play this amulet for free. It's really nice. Is it? The I guess well, we already have offering token to do it, huh? Well, the cool marksman is not. None of them are going to hit us, so the cool marksman doesn't die on this floor. But it goes to the top floor and only deals one damage. Uh, we could even drip fall something. Like the marksman. Dude. After we, Super we could right. guardian amulet now and then drip fall it. That's amazing. That's perfect. Hang on. It, wait, this is ninety. Hmm. Feels like we really wanted the overcharged defender to still die there. It's okay. It's all sorts of sapped. It's not doing anything. It won't hit up, up top. Maybe we wanted the harvest, but we definitely didn't lose anything here. Yeah. And we uh, may have gained. It, it feels like I'm worrying about the edge cases where we are just going to absolutely overrun the Sower of Sorrow here. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, not, it's not going to be particularly close. 
Oh man, I, my brain was still in the previous ring too with the haste boss, but this is this is we're, we're on to sweep town now. Use some of your burnout there, please. Top row's looking stacked. Definitely is looking incredibly good. Okay. Odd spells for the rest of it. Whew. Ooh, even the Guardian Amulet. Yeah. This has been a card. We can't even oh play no. anything. Oh no. Well, it doesn't matter, luckily. <laughs> the, the clutch spell we just after the spell. Yep. Just to just to flex. <laughs> you just gotta to flex. flex on him. Mm, right? There is some strong contemplation for gifts for a guard. It's literally just like access a tempo. lot more incant very early. It's tempo. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And it okay. can make a ton of damage. Like we can cycle. Hard pass. Sadly. No consideration for fatal melting? No. We don't have many units, uh, friendly units die, and we already have a lot of access to AoE through Soul Guard. True. True, as long as they're surviving long enough. Seraph the. So I should note this, and I had forgotten to note it. Seraph the Temperant is our Seraph, mm -hmm. which is fairly easily. If not the hardest combat in the game pre-Divinity, it's one of the nastiest, nastiest rows. And so keeping our 70 health Soul Guard alive will be a true challenge. We will definitely have to soften rows and sap and dazed and all sorts of things. Does that change what we want to dupe? Like maybe that changes us back from the big sludge to the ancient synergy. If only they had, like, quick, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, duping Ancient Synergy is good. Although, frankly, this is part of the reason why I thought Fatal Melting was worth consideration is what really kills you are the Dark Wings, mm -hmm. Shade Wings, 15 by 2. So AoE is still relevant, even though Soul Guard is doing it, because Soul Guard only does it on Revenge. Yeah. So whatever we can do to get to the back line, I mean, just, just anything, which means, honestly, like, duping Titan's Tooth is real legit. I, I legitimately forgot that we are keeping a Votivri in the deck that would fund the Fatal Melting. I was thinking, no, Fatal Melting does three damage. Maybe oh, it's okay. It, no, it, I, honestly, it was never going to be a lot. Gifts for the Guard was making me think about it, too. I have a very fresh memory of, of MT right now, too, because I had a couple losses recently to where I just disrespected something like this. I disrespected two frontliners, or I disrespected temperate backliners. And... Mm-hmm. Quick ticket. Yeah, what are no you thinking kidding. here? <sighs> Go right and clean up. Yeah. What is our events at this point, actually? It's a curious consideration. I, I don't even remember like when the events can occur. They're not in the logbook or anything like that, right? No, that would be cool though. That would be really cool. To see all the events. You would you would have to see them first, and then they'd be there. Mm-hmm. I think this can be um this can be like plus 25 health or heal pyre on kill or plus 10 health, no mm. healing, which is good. Plus 10 health, no killing. Um, healing is great. Yeah, this can be, I think we can get a rail spike here. Not the, not the give purge, but you know, a, a, the X cost cards. Speaking of give purge though, we could get bone dog, remove a card from the deck. We could, we could. And then there's the one room or one of the removals that we want. There's a consume. I guess we're overhealing. Consume? The consumables? The fair stand? Yeah, that should be here, right? That's not bad. It's in cans. Zero cost in cans, sometimes giving us extra spells as well. I'm kind of <sighs> digging this left side. Plus 10 health in particular is looking very, very nice. Come on. Okay. So, okay. random Hellhorned consumable card can give us the, the 25, armor. 25 armor. And I've just been Dang. getting it every single time I've done it recently. Would it be, that might even be a dupe target, genuinely. Mm -hmm. It's one of the reasons to check this first. 
mm-hmm. awoken. I can awoken give you the the thorns. It can. Oh, sorry. I don't mean thorns is in the the card that gives spikes. you spikes. I mean thorns is oh. in the card that gives you the stings. Yes, yes, it can. It can give you that too. It's so one cost now. That's huge. That is pretty good. And then it's pretty good. Stygian God it's is a lot AOE of stuff to draw. Spell weakness. The Awoken is not bad here. I mean, like, if you're if you can just promise that you can get alloy, whatever, you should go Hellhorn. <laughs> if you can guarantee the rare card, we should definitely go Hellhorn. Can't guarantee Maybe it. Maybe we just get both. Why why only one? Stygian Guard can give us crystalline shards, which is AoE as well, actually. Mm-hmm. Single round of it. it. It feels like Awoken has more things that we want to hit. Yeah. So I tend like, to agree. It's the first and then Hellhorn or Stygian. Yeah. It's not awful. Well, but Sap is not bad. You know, we throw that up on our This is this is cool, actually. I'm Go into on. it. There's no world where that's now the dupe target, right? <laughs> right. If only we could upgrade it first, it genuinely might be. Five heals 15, but 10 heals 51. 55, actually. 55? Oh, Yeah. Even yeah. more. Yeah. If you can get to straight to 10, which is... Get to drop both in the same hand. Optimistic. We're definitely taking it. Come on. Yeah. One again. No. <laughs> I, it's very rare to see multiple rounds I, I have found, anecdotally at least. This is so so tough now. Yep. I'm genuinely I am I'm wondering if this is Titan's Tooth. Just a literal unupgraded Titan's Tooth. Which is not exciting. Dripfall might be able to do the same thing for us. What if it's Guardian's Amulet doing the same thing for us? Just always, always be sapping. Always be sapping. Still getting I mean, some like, because they do so much. Because Titan's Tooth is the same thing of like, you have to have it on the turn that you actually want to account yeah. for these things. But the, the Shade Wings in the back line are 15 by two. This is negative mm. 16 damage from their output of 30. Yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, it's not enough. It's not going to keep the front line alive. It's... It is a lot, though. It's a great card. What other options do we have? And I mean, we've got some time before this has to be totally solved. I would agree that in the immediate term, I'm more excited about, say, like Ancient Synergy or, frankly, Dripfall. Is, you know, it's always going to be a lot of options. Mm -hmm. And I do really think that having another Sludge could be quite good. It's too bad we can't give one of them quick because then there's another big part of our answer. Would resolve all of our problems. Yeah. Okay, so I think the first thing we have to decide is, are we addressing our AoE problem now or later? Because if we're addressing it now, it's Titan's Tooth, take our lumps, move on. If we're mm -hmm. addressing it later, it's either the Big Sludge or the... Uh, the. I think we can address it later, and so I think we should address it later, because then we have more chances to either find good answers or upgrade the card. Wouldn't it be nice if Titan's Tooth had a plus 10 and a minus 1 cost? Just Incredible. to Just have it, you know? So then it's an Ancient Synergy or Big Sludge? Hmm. Feels... Synergy. That's your original plan, right? Yep. It is. I, don't, I think our damage is going to be good with the one Big Sludge, and we don't have enough movement support for two to be... Like, two is awkward for us right now, right? Mm-hmm. Let's do synergy. I quite like that actually. I, we've got ancient synergy, ancient synergy, crypt builder to help us soften frontliners while we're scaling it. Feels good. Are we going draw from the Arcus? Yeah, it's either draw or pip, right? We take the one pip so we can fit Votaveri. Mm hmm. Or we just go draw and fit more things. We're not always going to be set up on the top row, too. It's totally okay to. Like put this the the sirens on the top row, and then that even gives us the chance to drip fall them down at the end. That's true. That's true. It's the mm -hmm. the big thing I'm wondering about in terms of are we going for a pip? Are we going for draw? Is if we go for draw, that is pseudo AOE, pseudo frontline damage, right? It, it is a extra mm -hmm. chance in each hand to cycle back to the right cards to actually do the effect you need. It's the reason why draw is so good. It, it if your deck has good things, then your deck gets better when you have draw. Okay, Find I think it's more. draw, and I think that means it's Ancient Synergy. 
Sorry to take so long on that decision. I think that's no. like maybe one of the clinch decisions of this run though. I I I hope that as as an audience, all of our lovely viewers can see what we see, which is that these games re reward methodical thought, you know? Sometimes mm -hmm. sometimes you're so strong and you're so far ahead that you can put it on Isla Pilot and just mess around, but some of these runs come down to a couple key decisions. Yeah. I, I love the attention. This is my favorite part of the game. Mm -hmm. Couldn't agree more. I think, uh, I think, or at least I hope, that we do a good job of elucidating that to the, uh, mm. the viewers. That is the reason these games are interesting, because they have that kind of, you need to stop and think about it for a little bit kind of depth. Mm -hmm. Speaking of stopping and thinking about it for a little ring bit. Two? So if we're doing so ring two, it's just Solgar by itself and then everything else goes yep. bottom. Or top. We put Solgar the harvests, two, yeah. others top, and then that way we still have this first ring of three for harvest procs, assuming we see sludge next turn, which is not guaranteed. Okay. But we have a better option this way, right? We have a better chance. And we don't worry about the days because there's nothing that we need to attack anyway. That just gets thrown. In fact, just throw all of these. Boom. No sludge. I mean, that already does fine by itself. Sure. Hell yeah. But that removes harvests. <laughs> <laughs> right? That's so funny. It's probably worth, truly, just to, because, like, we are going way over the top in terms of harvest. And we we would really like to extend Soul Guard's life just a little bit. That's true. That's true. What For we could do that reason. Sorry? is drip fall one of these sycophants and do this ancient synergy, and then we still have one harvest next turn. Nope. Train steward to kill it. Oh gosh, we'll get the kill, there. you're right. Oh no. <laughs> drip fall the train steward. Train steward. Silent. <laughs> just gotta it's it's the APM game. You gotta dupe that and then dupe this at the exact same time. That's right, that's right. Split pathing. That's right. Oh well. And I mean we can still cast two spells on the on the row or whatever. Like drip falling here still counts because mm -hmm. it saves us two life and it gives us a shard. Alright, sludgeman. Sludge. Sludgy man. One big sludgy dude. Who would win? Alright. Uh, I mean... I think, like, Soul Guard is, again, past the point that it needs any more in Cant Triggers. Like, you continue building Soul Guards in Cant Triggers past the ability for it to kill the back line when you do not have enough frontline damage. Maybe part of your boss damage. When you want uh, it to you be part of your boss damage as well. Yep. But yeah, yeah. I think Big Sludge is already going to overwhelm that if we get yeah. this correct. And Soul Guard is great boss damage because it's revenge. Mm -hmm. So it's, you know, I mean, you're getting three times, three times double shard value every hit against Seraph. That's really fast. Oh, got him. Love it. Really strong turn. And there you go. We're like harvested up. Nothing can stop us now. Some things can stop us. <laughs> We've decided. <laughs> it's, it's the comic of uh, no fear, one fear. <laughs> what is our one fear in this circumstance, right? Because I'm I'm getting towards comfort. It's it's the double frontliners when we're, we're still low to kill double frontliners right now. We're not harvested enough to do that. Mm -hmm. So like we're already on the path to leak this top liner right now if we don't find some answer. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. True. Gifts for the guard, Will. There's the answer. Bailiff. Found it. <laughs> Couple answers. I mean, yeah. actually, that might be the answer for this floor. And then it's just him can't the hell out of this floor. Yeah. So that we do enough damage. Oh yeah, we should we should foregone foregone even though we can play Titans too, so that we get more effective plays. Nice, nice. Wow, we we got everything. Mm -hmm. That was really clutch, actually. A lot of incant runs behind me, because <laughs> no it is lie. it's like the build that fits the best into the way that I 
often like to play. All right. It's nice to have a tool in the toolkit that's fully yours. Mm -hmm. You know? Like, that's... I use it as the example all the time, but I use it as the example all the time because I know that people connect with it and that people understand when I use this as a basis. But, like, one of the big benefits of playing with Grand Finale a lot is that I know that I can play with Grand Finale. And that sounds so tautological, but when the card is offered to me, I have a very clear picture as to how I would use it and if I can use it and if it's the right pick. Yep. And if you play a lot of Encant, you've got more muscle memory so you can be even more creative with your builds because you've already got the basics. You know, you, you already know where it's gonna fit. And I think that's so much of these games to really push your game to the highest level, you need to reduce more and more of the game to, like I said, almost muscle memory, right? In some instances, there are very, very many where you can let that muscle memory carry you so far that you realize you made a mistake two rows ago. Because right, right, your muscle right, memory right. For sure. had yeah. some sort of a trigger. Hey, any, uh, any heuristic reasoning has a... It's going to get you. Deep offerings are a pretty quick access to more this of is, our zero costs. This, I, this is like... To me, this is no contest. To me, this deep offering is the business. Intent on Death can do some funny things with our with our Vota Fairy, but I don't think that's our combo. We've got our combo online. Two more so removals we... offered on the other side, as well as the double cost reduction yeah. of the deep offering, if we desperately want that. We could even go double cost uh, offering, sorry, double reduction in cost for the deep offering and end up duping that later on. I actually really like the right side here, because I don't think that there's particularly many unit upgrades that we're really worried about. Yeah, definitely not anymore, right? Mm -hmm. The health is unfortunate, you know, but it's okay. So funny. Is it is it ever double stack the um drip fall for for days? Or, or double stack Titan's Tooth for whatever? I don't think so. I actually do like this double stack heal. Yeah, I think that's like a really good splash. Okay, so my hesitancy, sorry, I, I'm doing a lot of my thinking in my head, and I'm like, that's not how content works, right? Um, no, it's kind of fun, because it gives me space, it gives everyone else space, and then we reconvene. <laughs> the he, Here's me reconvening, then. This Wildwood <laughs> Sap, if we're doing the double stack, becomes the dupe target, yeah. which makes it harder yes. for us to find our AoE. Where are we finding our AoE, uh, our AoE anymore? Well, so, so why right. do we need AoE? We need AoE because... We don't believe that without significant help, our soul guard lives. Mm -hmm. Is that okay? Can we get away with it? Two One consideration wings. is Sorry? we can bring it back to life. As long as we don't lose our backliner in the process, we do have burnout extension. If we don't think that it's a huge part of our end game profile against the Seraph. Now, if we need it to be very, very healthy against the Seraph, right? Mm -hmm. then this could still be it. And that's effective 55 healing by itself, which is huge. And then we still t dupe a Titan's Tooth, and that's totally okay. It's the time at which it regens that is the the part that's concerning me, because yeah. it... So um, imagine we have two rows in... in uh, quick concession, with, uh, succession rather with one another. Uh, both mm -hmm. of them have two shade wings. So shade wings yeah. are 15 by 2. So that's yeah. 60 damage in the first wave and then another 60 yep. in the second wave. If we don't yep. get to yep. mitigate either of those with the Titan's Tooth, it doesn't matter how much regen you have, you're dying to that. Yeah, yeah. But they die to Titan's Tooth regardless of whether it's double stack. Yeah, what I'm saying is, is this single Wildwood stack is good enough by itself that we don't need to dupe it. We can still dupe Titan's Tooth. Oh, right. Sorry, I completely misunderstood. I wasn't, yeah, no, no, no. I wasn't it's, it's suggesting uh, double stacking the Titan's Tooth. I was just suggesting like, oh, are we going to be duping this or not? Yeah, but yeah, I, I, got, I it, got it, got right. it. Yeah, no, I think this this puts it in a range to where it's a, a huge splash just by itself. So plus 10 on Titans, I think? Do we plus 10 the Titans or do we just reduce its cost? Twice mm -hmm. so that we can just play it straight up. It's not bad. It won't be able to kill Absolvers without plus 10. Well, the Frostbite will kill them, I guess. So it's fine. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, and the Absolvers don't do much damage at all. Three, so. 
Mm. Not a Don't we want to mind the Wildwood Sap? We can maybe. do that. And maybe it doesn't matter because it's a single cost, single play. Mm, exactly. Yeah. If we're duping it, we definitely have to reduce its cost. Otherwise, I don't think it's hugely important. Yeah. Yeah. Hang on. Uh, is that it? Have it for exactly the right wave when we're about to leak huge damage, when we're about to lose our frontliner. Have two of them on permafrost. But then that's a problem with too that much discard. random discard. Yeah. Yeah. I, th I think playing around permafrost is just as finicky as we thought it would be on ring zero when we skipped the relic. Mm hmm. That turned out really well. I think well. it's okay. I think it's okay. I think this is a great dupe for us. And that plus ancient synergies, we are rapidly approaching the point to where we're going to be okay. It's nameless in a regular Stewie, right? Yes. Because there is still a world in which the sludge needs health in front of it and the siren mm -hmm, just mm -hmm. has to be a buffer. Yeah, agreed. All right, on that, call channel three, <laughs> power on. This is so wild. We're, we're very much not thinking about this ring. We're very much thinking about the final ring, I think. Hang well, on. this is going to be training because there's shade wings here and, and gilded. So there are. Enemies enter with spell shield two would deny the first two hits of an ancient synergy. I think we can get away with this dog. We'll have to be, we may have to do some chumping. Okay. Don't have to convince me too hard to try and get 400 gold at this. <laughs> yeah. Okay, they're only 12 by twos, right? They're not up to their 15 by two yet. We're not C25 yet. Ooh. Yeah, which is really helpful. Oh, and we're about to get so many free things because we can play three units. So the whole hand is free and we even get a whole new hand afterwards, which means do we set up on row one? Or do we need to just go ahead and set up on row two? That also gives us a way to get to the back line collector, should they spawn. I think we do row two. And I think the reason yeah. is because we go, we, we do this whole hand, right? Yeah. But the big sludge goes on the top floor. And then we reload with the, uh, the deep offering. We either get the siren and we put it oh. down, and then we're closer to our drip fall. Yeah. Or we don't. <laughs> I see where you're going here, though. No, no, but this is and and the drip fall will lose us one more turn of attacking, which is a concern. Mm -hmm. Um, but I really like having one more buffer in front of the big sludge because the only way we lose here is that we fail to keep big sludge alive mm. for the final boss, right? For living armor. And so I like that line. That also gives us the ability to use a votivory as a chump in the midline. Yes, it does. Exactly. Saves us 10 HP though. Okay. Seems, seems, seems cool. Is there an order in we which just... we have to play these in order to guarantee the best cost reductions? Oh, I see. Like ancient synergy out before anything else. So that we maximize energy. Yeah, that, that seems correct. That way all of the two costs get downgraded. Yeah. Well, I, I wasn't going to play the primitive mold as well because I do. Well, we only need one energy after this because Dripfall is zero costed. So we can play the primitive mold. If Flicker's Liquor could hit another unit, that's the ideal. Is that all the units are free and then deep offering is free. And then we have two energy for the redraw. There's the deep offering. Word uh -huh. goes there. Big sludge goes top. And then I fog on. Um, Wait a minute. Yeah, there we go. Even more energy. Hmm? We should play that. We should. We should. Hmm? Yeah. I think so. I think yeah. so. Right? Yep, yep, Taking yep. too much damage to the threat. It, it makes sure that not getting the, or not being able to access rather the drip fall isn't the end of the fight. Agreed. So is this offering bottom row to drop the guardians? Weaken them now, like sap that bottom row. It definitely could be. My worry is this collect, well, okay. It really We're depends what them. the offering token hits. Cause if this gets us the, the drip fall, then we have to decide some Tough stuff up here, but let's do this early. Never mind, we're fine. Yeah, that's going to make our next turn much, much more safe. 
How about we send this nerd to the back? Love it. Get out of here, nerd. Such a nerd. Rhapsody, you know, we, we play video games on the internet for money. You know yeah. that, right? Okay. Yes. Which is, uh, as as I'm certain, uh, an extremely Chad thing to do, right? Yes. <laughs> so Chad. <laughs> so we're drip fall this turn. Yeah. And th and then we'll Got be the swinging in by so. next turn. Oh yeah, perfect. Hey, they did their job. They really I've been did. Happy with the pick. I've been happy with the pick. I couldn't be more pleased with them. Well. It doesn't die. But soon. It's on its way. Hey, there we go. That's more than enough. Oh, we haven't played a region yet. Yeah, there's our spooky, frontliner as well. Spooky days are upon us. <laughs> so they are. Ow, actually. There is a lot of ow happening. But we're almost done with waves. Our sludge is growing. And we can reform Soul Guard to get us through these waves and like we would put her on the row one so we we've we we will survive this yet we will live one then yeah, for as much as we can get towards the kill perfect and then that means we kill the backliners next turn too which is important mm -hmm. should we use one four gun power on the bottom to kill a wilt wing yep Exactly the bait was going on there. Now there's oh, no damage. way to save this floor. Gosh. I believe. Well, what's in our draw? Oh, wait, because we could offering into like a guardian's amulet to at least reduce the damage substantially. That's true. An offering and, always and goes we were right playing now the offering the anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Ooh. Okay. It's possible. Let's make that free. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Drop the primitive, play the votaberry, play gifts for free. It's all coming together. Ooh. Oh. My gosh, I think we just saved. Well, oh crap. No, it just dies when the unit unless we drip full that, but then the backline units definitely get their hit sure. There is there is something to be done here, right? It's just what is it? Is it Dripfall one of these away, reducing the damage of the Siren of the Sea, try and tank as much as we can into the Soul Guard, just pump out Titan. giant spells on this Titan floor, maybe? Bottom row. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they... That's really tempting, isn't it? That seems like a path. Yeah. And then spells, 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 spells for days. Wicked. The last round we had to worry about, and you know what? You're the new honorary soul guard. Welcome aboard. Carry on in her name. Oh, welcome back, soul guard. <laughs> it's been a long time. How you been? Oh, goodbye, soul guard. Thanks for visiting. See you next fall. How do we deal with the top? Can we kill the top liner? It's only we'll Castle by Ember that can do that at the moment, I think. Okay. Well, actually, no, this gets soul guard. And then we play her up top and she gets hit. Not even bad. It's not gonna. No, it's not gonna do enough. Cal... We get calcified for free if we just wanna play it. Is that gonna Is be that more really important worth later? Then having one more of these for one more frontline kill and, and ring eight does seem pretty nice, doesn't it? It also, like, there is a card removal effect that is going on when we play them if we wanna just get towards our incants and our drip yeah. walls and such much more quickly i really don't mind using it here i mean I, we do have a lot of other really strong answers they've they've kind of done their job oops <laughs> big oops hours should have played those in the opposite uh... order <laughs> oh gosh how do we kill these back lines oh no Hmm. This is dire. We drip fall one of these shade wings and it buys us some time. Buys us a not insignificant amount of time, thankfully. 
Then gifts for a guard in the next cycle. That's more frostbite. I don't think we're too far off. Yeah. Especially if we can get Titans. No, we burnt out Titans Tooth already. We're going to get Soul Guard right here. That's pretty important, isn't it? Oh, but then, yeah, we play that first and then the Votavari. So that gift for the guard is free. And then this gets us back Soul Guard guaranteed. One of them will. Mm -hmm. What are the others going to get us? So we're playing them all anyway, regardless. And the Siren goes out because that's all that fits. It does, but does it go like behind everyone else? It's it goes behind, yes, because we want to kill the backliners immediately, which means getting Frost down mm -hmm. with Soul Guard. Because then the incoming damage is so much less, and that then will extend the amount of Frost that we get down. No, I think that just wins for us. Siren back and two more spells. Wait a second. Train steward front. So it's 43. It takes the 18. It goes down to mathematics. Goes down to 25. Uh, shade wing, shade wings. It goes down to one. This shade wing hits. Then the final shade wing hits only one time. Soul guard. Uh, mm. And then with the two extra spells having been played out, all of them die to the frostbite after that round. And then soul guard is left standing to hit the living armor with its three turns of burnout. Does Siren up front do a similar thing? Uh, no, because it takes all of the damage from the enemies and then it burns out. That's a 7,100? Yep. Oh, wow. But it's got Burnout 1 and it's got Dazed. Gosh, yeah, the Burnout. I I, I didn't think about Burnout at all. I, I see what you're saying. Okay. Is this, this going to get us the help? Yikes doesn't get us all the way if it doesn't kill us god i can't help but feel that that was not perfectly managed <laughs> but we lived we lived and the money mm -hmm. so much of it mortal entrapment here definitely not perfectly managed that's the mortal entrapment for the the seraph yeah. i don't mean that by the way i should say we're, we're co-pilots here right so that's certainly not intended to be I'm not one to spend much time fixating on failures, only on opportunities and successes, right? But you can't. I'm Otherwise, just trying to think, like, what could we have done differently there to prepare for? Living armor was not supposed to be the hard part. Yeah. It was supposed to be the waves. It, it, so did we did we over fixate on waves? Maybe like did we could we have leaked a little bit more to have a better living armor? I don't know. No, it, it was it was the fact that I didn't play out the uh, the random reform before playing the votivory, which would have decreased the cost mm. of the. Uh, the double stacked guardian amulets so I would have actually been able to play that uh, mm, that mm. with the sap we would have been able to set up enough frostbite on the midline to actually make that so much simpler that yeah, interesting I can only uh, claim heat stroke as an excuse enough times <laughs> that's interesting it can it really it really can come down to one thing huh okay endless to a first friendly unit that is just endless on soul guard so we don't have to reform it and don't have to worry about burnout it comes back on its that's full true. hp value lives as long as it that's, needs to that's really not bad right that could that's exactly the kind of answer that we need that just means that we don't get to descend anything until the very end which is honestly fine hey hey actually also 25 percent of the time this just kills the shade wing do we care to get more harvest stacks <sighs> like if we're taking votive key it might honestly just be okay to let it die yeah i mean if, if the soul guard dies every single turn it's just a mana pump for the next turn with the flicker's liquor yeah i like that we I just like have that. to be careful with it being in a weird health point to where the damage splashes over and kills the sludge that's a real thing mm -hmm. we'll avoid that as best we can mm -hmm. so we can take the reroll there the we didn't go for the capacity, so I don't think we go for any more unit upgrades. Almost anything. Double removal at this point. I feel that we can now remove some reforms. Because we yeah. have the endless effect that we can use for 
whichever units we want to be endless. Actually, and actually, endless preserves enhanced stat upgrades, doesn't it? I don't know if it preserves the um, the shards, but yeah, it'll preserve preserves that definitely. It'll well, but so for the other siren. Hmm. Very very true. Which means that we can actually have multiple rows against not only the waves but against the seraph. We're set up row one or row two. We'll it, end up it with an endless we... siren and endless front and right like it, yeah. it just depends if we draw the siren as our banner unit on right. turn one or turn right. two. Right, very true. Um. I'm, I'm happy to remove the primitive molds. The large reason behind that is because I don't want to have to play the primitive molds in order to then play a card so that I can decrease the cost of a different yeah. expensive card in hand. Instead, I'd yeah. rather just have zero costs and high costs. Yeah, but I don't mind having some and I don't mind having this one steward to like pull some of the sap. Mm -hmm. That's a thing. And especially we have we have less health to play with now, so we do need to be quite sure. Just another Titan's Tooth. Make it simple. Do we have to now that we have Endless? Can we get away with duping another unit? Can we put another Sludge in this deck? Genuinely. I think we can. Especially because, like, the the secondary Sludge that comes out, like, we can use it as a frontline unit. Sure, it'll lose all of its rage on the Harvest. Mm -hmm. And, well, I guess that... Hmm. So if the first turn is Soul Guard plus Siren of the Sea, then we would put Soul Guard with a Siren of the Sea on a... We can't put it on a different floor because then we have to split the incants heavily. Mm -hmm. So it would go on the same floor and then we'd be loading the big sludge for a second line. Yeah, and, but then how are we getting them all their harvests, right? That's the question. Mm -hmm. They really want to be there with the kill. That's curious. It could be Mortal, uh, Mortal Entrapment or Guardian's Amulet just for versatility against Sarah. Mm -hmm. There's also... We have a Merchant of Steel, no? Mm -hmm. Does it have Burnout in it? Because there's a crazy world where we take... We take um, Burnout, if that was like in a reroll, plus the Wax Embracers, and then we do Votivary. <laughs> and it's like... <laughs> what are you doing? Are we re-rolling to look at another relic here? Or are yeah. we taking mold? Okay. Let's do it. This might inform our decision. It's Winged Steel card. is not bad here. Nor is rules. Oh, well, rules seems weird, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. It's just not enough. Yeah. I, I like the Winged Steel. Winged Steel, we have one more removal we can purchase. I'm leaning towards the train steward, to be honest. Just cut it at this point. Yeah. I mean, it is another unit that can actually be hit by the primitive mold, though. So it is more yeah. cost decrease after the fact. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good little energy generation. I mean, we have enough money that we could reroll here to look for burnout for Votavari, if that's a thing that we want to be able to play around. In the absence of, we can make it very strong. <laughs> plus 10, plus 25 of Ray. You what a bad vote of Ray. <laughs> I'm really torn on this decision. This decision is hard. Mm -hmm. The the waves are nasty. And we need to be sure that we not only live through them, but that we don't, ha don't have living armor take two. And actually keeping alive our frontliner for the boss could be really nice. Because if they're still alive, then we get to use those shard stacks to really do some damage to the Seraph, right? So stacking up shard is relevant. Which makes me wonder if this is Wildwood Sap. We have two Titan's Teeth in the deck. So, what, we... If we whiff That's extremely it, right? hard... Just we lose. would just still lose the frontline unit regardless. I Honestly, the longer I look at this, the more I think it's just take the Titan's Tooth and go. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree. Cool. Okay, but we'll put plus 10 damage on this Votaberry. <laughs> I mean, we do have the ability to remove something. <laughs> Should we flex instead? I don't think this is a flex. Get him, Votaberry. And you know what? 
Get him, Votabree. That will make it hard to chump with, but it's probably going to die because it's Seraph the Temperate. I, I wasn't even thinking it would be available to be on the same floor. Yeah, yeah. Very true. Your job is to die. So I don't think we should set up top floor. Mm -mm. So I want to take advantage of the other floors. So we did get the siren. We think Soul Guard is our endless, right? Mm-hmm. Because okay. Siren's just going to be constantly gaining armor, right? And oh. like in the end round, its armor is going to be what let's, matters. Let's set up first row here because we have the Titan's Tooth and Offering Token this turn. Oh, right, to get the double incant off. Mm -hmm. Double incant and to get this, we're getting this kill right away. Like, we want to use this Titan's Tooth against a Shade Wing, I presume. We do. The The reason I'm a little hesitant about putting it on the bottom floor is because in a world where we draw two Titan's Teeth on the same turn, it's overkill on the bottom floor. But if we have, like, this is the load, this is the shoot, right? Like, True. these are in the magazine, this is in the chamber. We have the ability Absolutely. to split amongst the two. So we would Soul Guard mid and just still play the Titan's Tooth bottom here? Yeah, the Titan's Tooth would go two. on the bottom. Okay. okay, I like that. I like that. Hey, you know, we could, nice even, we could even Votavree the bottom line and then use Ancient Synergy here, then still go offering in the Titan Sooth on the mid line to buff the Siren as well as the Soul Guard. Unless we're trying to use that to clear the Lightwing on the top floor to save some HP. So oh, we're buffing... Not. If we're buffing Siren with Soul Guard, that means we're not planning to need to bring Soul Guard back. Either that or then we're going to set up Soul Guard bot row afterwards. We won't have space. Soul Guard right, only gets yeah, to go yeah. in front of the pledge one time. Yes, yeah. The um the, the Siren of the Sea would be our HP, like, big powerhouse after that point. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm relying on the, the Titan's Tooth and the spreading over the two different floors to give us the ability to keep the Siren of the Sea constantly healthy using its armor as well as its plus two from the encant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And then are we just letting the light wings go past? We can certainly afford to leak one light wings if if it if that's the play. We could uh, we can we can tighten Sooth up top if we're just gonna ancient synergy on the bot. Which I like. And then put Votavree down the bot to actually kill the Shade Wing. Plus that puts Tin Frost on the boss, which I do think is relevant. Yeah, that's another one of the reasons that I really wanted to go for the Titan's mm -hmm. Tooth. Cool. And then that way, we don't even have to offering token up top. We can do it in the mid. Because we got the cost down here. Okay, cool. I was just trying to figure out what we were going to get on the draw. Yeah. Um... Oh, we could put Votavari out too to block in mid a little bit. Although, yeah, and maybe that's fine. Right? Maybe that's fine. Maybe it is. In what world is it not? Because the Shade Wings is just still dying to the Siren of the Sea here. The Vote of yeah. Ray could easily be used to try and split the attention of the Seraph, at least. That's true. I guess or that's we the put reason. it up up top. We put it out up top, and and it can also clean up a <laughs> it can clean up a Light Wings that gets up there. It can until it gets sapped too many times, and then it's just true because it's coming in with three sap so it's going it's just down a question to... of whether we need it to die like do we want it to die we we don't really care we're not harvesting it so do we want to just take care of this one early yes i think keep ourselves safe yeah this is more time to I find the sludge so. mm -hmm. speaking of sludge is arrive welcome sludge oh gosh <laughs> sapped all the hell <laughs> ridiculous it do be like that it's okay well we can foregone up top and then sludge gets to scale good point Ooh. It, it's a nice mortal entrapment yeah it's big we have to hit it relatively consistently for the boss to be the correct target I guess this turn is, is really good it's not half bad at all. That's that one that I wanted. It's tough. It's definitely tough. 
Although we may end up, you know, it's endless. We may end up losing them and bringing them back once. And then we'll have Wildwood. Uh -huh. Like, because they're certainly trying to die right now. <laughs> He's hoping they are. Okay. Uh, that, this got... is the one turn where Votaveri dying would have been really nice. We, because we, we can't play both of these things. We do have two Titan's Teeth in the deck. The uh, Deep Offering draws us five, and they are both the one-cost ones. Yeah. So I think good. we do fish for it. But just after play casting out the zeros. Things. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is interesting, isn't it? Like, is there ever a foregone power played here? Right? I mean, it kills the frontliner. It gets us two extra spell casts. Well, it doesn't get us two extra spell casts because Deep Offering still plays the Crypt Builder. Oh, yeah. Okay, no, this is just Deep Offering. Yeah. Good call. There we go. Huge. Oh, Massive hang on before turn. that happens. Okay, this means that we're never resurrecting our Soul Guard here, but I think that's okay. We can bring them back. 50 Row 1 if we need a little bit of help. Ah. <laughs> At the very least, we saw all three of the Titan's Teeth before we hit the next cycle, so there's nothing that stuck yes. in the position of being only one played yep. in two cycles. Yep. And here is Guardians. Fortunately, nothing to reform. That does feel like a bit of a miss, finding not finding a line by which we can make sure that these reforms are hitting something, but it's just because of what what, what we're going to do. We drew the train steward there, right? So that's okay. it's okay. Silly vote of Aerie. What are you even up to? What do you what do you think you're doing? Silly exactly. Votavery. Sap is for useful units. Um, is it? What is it? Yeah, I think it's just delete units to save HP on the Soul Guard as much as I can. Yeah. Ah. Why? Why? See? Huh? How about you do I... that? See? Titan's Tooth is back. Ancient Synergy is here. Uh-oh. We leak a little bit. We're all good. We leak a fair bit, but we, we okay. We're all good. Oh my gosh. No, we don't. It's 81 Frost. How did we do that? Mm -hmm. <gasps> shards. So many shards. Titan's Teeth right. are good. Titan's Teeth are good. I'm feeling really good about having three Titan's Teeth mm -hmm. in this deck. I think we leaked that Lightwing, though. Like, let's focus on this mid row, right? Definitely. Um, I mean, we're only taking 12 damage in this row, and what we prevent, I guess we do prevent 11 of it here. Where's this steward going? You can go primitive and then steward, and then we're guaranteed to be able to play this script builder wherever we want. Stewards, then, a real reason for it to be anywhere else. Are we ever see at least? Oh, they live through a Crypt Builder, the Gilded Wings, don't they? Do they have enough yet? Which? Oh, no, they're 155 at this level. The Gilded Wings. Because I was going to say we can play it. Or they won. We can play a Crypt Builder on the bottom row just to soften one up in the front. But they die. They don't have They don't have the max health yet. Do you ever energy siphon the boss a couple times? Love it. Right? I'm just going to reduce damage taken to Soul Guard as much as possible, I guess. Seems very reasonable. The shard stacking is really doing something here too. It's a lot of frost. Like, look at that. Look at the seraph. It's brutal. It's doing incredibly well, despite the fact that we go to yeah. try and find a way to kill. Wanna die? A couple of units die on the bottom. Want some want some death. Tripful the healthy one? Ancient synergy, ancient synergy. I like that. We are playing these two units out on the bottom, right? Yes. Okay. That can be now. Just makes for interesting energy manipulation shenanigans. Yep. All right. We're set up. There's Quick no problem turn. anymore. <laughs> We're on 91 Frost, too. Pretty sweet. Uh, all right, I think we, we play the Votary first because we can't play the Titan's Tooth and then still play both three costs. It's true. Yeah. Nice. Votary dies. No matter what, 
And there's some days. Oh, but that's damage. Do we want that to be our damage? Well, I mean, the, the two days it's going to have up here is going to be more damage than any of our spells. You're right. You're right. It's not even close. That's, and then we can even why. throw another energy siphon if we want to. Oh. Oh, okay. Bye. I'm surprised you didn't get one of those off on the bottom for even more frost. I think I'm just hard committing to Soul God, kind of staring yeah. the enemy down. It's Oh, it's happening. No, nope, yeah, Soul God not, lives. Soul... Not even close. <laughs> no, Soul God <laughs> Hell lives. Yeah. There we go. Yes. Yes. Look at that, man. GG, reps. Oh, GG. All of our maneuvering was worth it. Here, Here's our confident win. But let me let me assure me and you and everyone that if we had not thought as much as we did throughout this run about Seraph the Temperate, mm -hmm. this boss punishes Hubris so hard. Yep. One of the you know, it's just nasty. The Shade Wings are nasty. One of the things that is nice about it is the triple strike hits the revenge three times rather than just like one hit of twenty or twenty-five yeah. or some such. Um, yeah. So Soul Guard is always like real, real comfortable in this fight. The thing that was mm. concerning me was exactly Wait. whether or not we would keep Soul Guard alive. Um, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm pretty encouraged by the fact that we've got a Siren of the Sea who's standing here with 200 effective HP. So yeah. Yeah. we were going to be fine. It was just about leaking. So literally without mm. the mistake in the, the living wall fight, this, this would have, or rather this does prove uh, a kind of cogency to the deck that was developed over those kind yes. of two decisions. Agree, agree. And you know, it, it's it's so hard. Micro in fights is really tough. There's just it's very it, the the combinations of it is so high. Mm -hmm. You know, all these creatures that you can play on different places, different orderings, different considerations about where the real threat is. And and truthfully, I totally underestimated how nasty Living Wall would be if we misplayed that fight. I, I just wasn't thinking about it at all. I was only thinking about waves. Yeah, it, it was specifically the presence of the two backliners. Honestly, if if mm -hmm. nothing else, I like that that proved right before the final fight, exactly as you were talking about before we even mm -hmm. went into the Living Wall fight, exactly how nasty those shade splitters were going to be. Shade <laughs> wings were going to be, rather. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a good kind of pre-learning, wasn't it? That's mm -hmm. totally true. Set that's us funny. up pretty much perfectly. I'm going to hit the run summary button here. Oh, wow. That's an easy one to make a code out of. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> Rhapsody. Harmful papers photos. <laughs> now, I... So I... I As you know... Mm -hmm. I have been gallivanting around with uh, with some of the the hoi polloi, the uh, the the British glitterazzi. Um, <laughs> this is this is this is an outdated <laughs> reference, I think, by this point. But the thing that really annoys me is that in in the UK, as I'm hanging out with my friends Jude Law and Hugh Grant <laughs> and uh, Elizabeth Dempsey, I think she's. She might be Canadian. Whoops. Um, and uh, other British people. Uh, and Wallace, the, the William Wallace. As I'm hanging out with all of my favorite uh, UK right. celebrities, I just find sure. that the paparazzi won't leave us alone. And the really annoying thing in the UK system is their tabloid press and their mainstream press are very, very joined. The Daily Mail is a giant tabloid that mm -hmm. masquerades as, a, as official news and unfortunately is given kind of the, the veneer of legitimacy by a lot of people. And honestly, I just don't want them taking pictures of me and my favorite celebrity friends in the UK, including the Archbishop of Canterbury and <laughs> Henry VII. I just don't yeah. want to appear in any of that harmful papers photos. And why would you? Exactly. And why would you? You know I heard, you know what I thought of immediately here? Mm. Two, two, two stories, they're quick. I, I, have, I haven't a creative tale, but I do have the two things that I thought of immediately. One, when you talked about paparazzi, mm -hmm. I learned that some celebrities, including, since you're talking about the UK, Daniel Radcliffe, yes. when they're on shoots, try to have like a sweater that they have and wear the same one every day for like months 
so mm-hmm. that the tabloids don't have interesting pictures to work with because they're wearing the same clothes yep. every day, every time they see them, which is so brilliant, right? And then the second thing I thought of when I went, the, literally the first thing that came to mind when I read harmful papers photos, in high school, in the US at least, a lot of public schools have like mandatory photo shoots once a year mm. where they take a picture of you and it's ostensibly for the the school yearbook, but what it's really for is to sell your parents' professional photos or semi-professional photos. Mm-hmm. But we- they made no effort at all to organize this in such a time that you would be able to prep to actually look nice. And in fact, I played soccer, club and varsity soccer all through high school. And the photo shoot on one of my years, I want to say it was sophomore year or junior year, mm-hmm. was the period directly after soccer practice. <laughs> also, we didn't have showers. So I'm coming straight off the pitch, right into this photo shoot. And I was feeling particularly ornery on this day. So I messed up my hair and I kind of messed up my eyes. Mm-hmm. And I still have the school yearbook where I just look totally cracked out in this picture. <laughs> it's fantastic. I'm actively sweating. The, the thing, like, so we, oh, we had that here in Australia as well. Yeah. But... Yeah. All of them are forgettable, right? Really? For me, yeah. at the very least. Yes, that's having, true. No, that's true. That's true. That's true. Having something like that, having a story like that and a photo to to uh, like mm-hmm. accompany it, that's way better than just having it's a photo of you know, the pimply yep, face teen me. version of me <laughs> smiling awkwardly yeah. at the camera because I haven't exactly. actually learned how to smile yet. I have this wonderful harmful harmful paper photo that I can go back to, you know, and look at. It it it's, it is and it was actively harmful, considered harmful by experts. I'm surprised they published the picture. I thought they would just put a blank square and say I didn't show up. Yeah, oh, I man. I had desperately hoped that they were going to do that one year <laughs> because I just knew I I was just so yeah. caught off guard by it and yeah. I was very much in a period of time where uh I you know, I, I had gone through puberty, but I was around the area where I didn't necessarily know how well to care for myself yet. Right. So I, I was just like a, a sweaty, hormonal, stinky mess, <laughs> just unkempt in every way possible. And right. to me at the time, those seemed important. Like, oh, this is immortalizing me for the future. Uh oh. Right. <laughs> And then just <laughs> built myself up into such a lather that the smile is very much like hide the pain <laughs> Harold's kind of situation, right? Like if if those photos ever manage to make their way to the internet and surface, like it definitely looks like I'm looking just past the camera at someone <laughs> like assaulting a family member of mine or something, right? There, there's something dire happening, happening in my field of view. Oh, it's a hor- it's horror through a, a single photo. Mm-hmm. The the off screen horror. That's amazing. It's a story told entirely in the eyes. Uh, but for the moment, my name has been Rhapsody. His name has been Sneaky Cheek. Actually, hang on. Uh, you did the intro. Oh yeah. You did the intro. This is your outro, nerd. Yeah, my nerd. Get in the get in the clown <laughs> car, nerd. <laughs> <laughs> that was harmful paper photos, but for now, his name's been Rhapsody. My name's been Sneaky Teak. Thanks for joining us for another week of the ladder streak. A fantastic victory, and we'll catch you tomorrow. Adios.